Firehouse, and the pregame show is straight ahead. Stay with us. Inside Memorial Stadium in Columbus, Georgia. This afternoon, terrific college football matchup out of the SIAC. The Golden Tigers of Tuskegee meet the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse College. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Stan Luter once again this afternoon. 67th battle between these two terrific schools, a long and illustrious history between Morehouse and Tuskegee and Stan. This is the 100th anniversary of this series that began back in 1902. We're having an awful lot of fun here this weekend. We're looking forward to a terrific game and as we begin our pregame show, how about that series history? Wow, I'll tell you, 58, 27 and 7, the 67 Tuskegee Classic. And here's the bottom line you need to know. They don't like each other. Maroon Tigers, Golden Tigers, and I'm glad to see that you saw, just like I did the red tie memo today. Yes. We got that. So everybody's in sync today. Great football game. We think we're going to have a terrific game. We're going to talk a lot about this one. Morehouse beat Tuskegee last year, but Tuskegee's won 28 of their last 30 games overall. The pregame show continues in just a moment from Columbus. Memorial Stadium in Columbus, Georgia. It's the 100th anniversary of the terrific series between Tuskegee and Morehouse College, and it's next. And we welcome you inside Memorial Stadium in Columbus, Georgia. A beautiful afternoon for college football out of the SIAC this afternoon. The Golden Tigers of Tuskegee take on the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse College. Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Stan Luter for this game. Tuskegee is ranked eighth in the latest NCAA Division II standings, but they're coming off a loss, Stan, just their second in the last three years. Morehouse College had last week off to get ready for this game. How do you see the matchup? I see this as one of those outstanding games where Morehouse has got to do some things off. Offense. Tuskegee got to play defense, handle the football, and both teams are going to come out here very excited today. All right, let's get into it now. Let's check our Chrysler keys to the game. I'll tell you what, the Tuskegee way, you've got to play offense, you've got to play defense. They're number one in both of those categories in the SIAC. They've got to control the game. And then they got to bite them, put a bite in them. When you get the lead, put teams away. Coach Kama Jesus said, we're not aggressive and hungry at the end of ball games. For the Morehouse team, Morehouse has got to do a few things, and I'll tell you what they are. They've got to say, it's all mine. Offensively, they've got to control the line of scrimmage. They've also got to handle the football. Secondly, they've got to make this special. Their kicking game, 16 of 16 extra points, 6 out of 7 field goals. They've got to handle the kicking game. They have a chance to win this ball game. Now, Tuskegee is one of the winningest programs in black college sports, but Morehouse is not going to be intimidated. They won this game last year 14 to 3. Let's go ahead now and take a look at our ones to watch, and they're brought to us by 1-800-CALL-ATT. I think the fans at home are going to really enjoy number three, Cortland Florence. You see that, 125 rushes, 697. He scored all eight of the rushing touchdowns for Tuskegee this season. Phenomenal kid, power runner, can go inside, can go outside, makes the big plays. But you want to see a big play specialist, take no further look than Kenneth Rogers. Also, number three, 31 receptions this year, one of the tops in the SIAC, eight touchdowns. Already, he's had three games where he scored two touchdowns or more. A big play guy, you're going to enjoy Enjoy Cortland Florence and Kenneth Rogers. Rogers has eight touchdowns. He scored five touchdowns in their last two games. We think we've got a terrific matchup for you. Tuskegee and Morehouse coming at you from Columbus, Georgia. Our kickoff is next. Stay with us. Good afternoon, SIAC football, Tuskegee and Morehouse from Memorial Stadium in Columbus, Georgia. Morehouse has won the toss. They've elected to receive. They were off last week, Stan, while Albany State was putting up nearly 500 yards in total offense in a upset win over Tuskegee, and so we'll have to see how Tuskegee bounces back. Well, Tuskegee's a team that they're not accustomed to losing, so they're mad. It's been a long week of practice at Tuskegee University. For Morehouse, as you said, they've been off for a week, so it's given them a chance to, to heal a few nicks and bruises. You also got to wonder how their timing's going to be, having been off for a week and getting ready to play a big game, the big rival. We'll see in, a ch in just a couple of seconds. All right, and our kickoff is brought to you by Chrysler. 
Well, I tell you what, this has been a game a lot of people have really been looking forward to. Tuskegee is five and one overall. Morehouse is four and two overall. Tuskegee three and one in conference play. Morehouse is two and one in conference play. And we are underway. From the goal line, this is Rogers, and Rogers taking it to the outside across the 30 all the way up to the 34-yard line. So an outstanding kickoff return by Kenneth Rogers, and that is where Morehouse will start first and 10. Adam Lamb is the quarterback for Morehouse. Morehouse averaging 21 and a half points per game. That's good for sixth in the SIAC. Uh, total yards not so good, averaging just under 300 total yards a game, 292.7. That is only good for eighth in a nine-team lead. And we are underway, and here's the handoff. And as we expected, we're going to see a lot of the tailback, John David Washington. Here's our offensive lineup first for Morehouse College, and it's brought to you this afternoon by Drumline. J.D. Washington is at the tailback spot. Kenneth Rogers, one of the most dangerous wide receivers in all of college football. Offensive line from the right tackle is a very, very strong player. And Ronald Richards also in there today on the offensive line. Second down and eight. For Morehouse. Keep your eye on that offensive line for this Morehouse squad. Fabrice Ain, number 78, the right guard. Big kid, 6'4", 300 pounds. They'll run behind him a lot during this football game. Barry Anderson is our referee this afternoon. And we're not sure why we have a delay of play here. Uh, the the the, uh, the gate the uh, clock the 30 second 25 second clock date right. is inoperable at this second. Okay, so we may be keeping the the play clock on the field. Last week Tuskegee was a 40 to 20 loser at home to Albany State, while Morehouse Morehouse has been idle since whipping Kentucky State 45 17 two weeks ago. Kind of surprised the clock's not working here, Stan, because they had a high school game here last night, had a high school game here Thursday night. It's tired. Yeah, maybe that's <laughs> too, it. Too many games. I don't know. Rick Comingy, not only is the, the head football coach at Tuskegee, Stan, he's also the athletic director. Seventh year at Tuskegee, 11th overall, winner of three conference championships. He's been to four straight Pioneer Bowls. They won three of those four. He won an NIA, NAIA title at Central State in 1995. He's 5-1 and one lifetime against Morehouse. See, one game clock is, is in, the game clocks are out of sync. One's got 24 on at one end of the field. The other one's got 26 down at the far end to close into this stadium. So they, they want to get the, uh, the, uh, the 30 second clock, 25 second clocks actually in sync before they go. I think they got them ready. They can get this game going. Here we go. Second down and eight for Morehouse. Here's Lamb on the rollout to the right. Passing incomplete intended for Rodgers. He was double teamed at the 50-yard line, so now it's third down and long. Tuskegee's defensive line looks like this. Bumbaugh is one of the best around the SIAC at one defensive end spot. Knox is also very strong at the other. And, of course, our lineups are brought to you today by Drumline. In the linebacking core, Stanton, Bins, and Washington. And in the defensive secondary, Drayton Florence is one of the best in this conference. He, he's at the free safety spot. On third down, here's Lamb. 
And Lamb is driven out of bounds at the 42-yard line, and that is going to be two yards shy of a first down. It's going to be fourth down for Morehouse. And that means it's time for Byron Archibald. A junior from Tuscaloosa took over for Adam Williams in the second game of the season as the punter. Well, he'll kick to one of the premier defensive backs and return guys in the uh, SIAC and all of college football, Kenneth Stanton. You, you're going to enjoy him. They kick to him. He might break one. Low snap. Looking, looking. Looked as if he was going to pass the ball instead of kick. Finally dragged down at the 32-yard line, and so the first big break of the game goes to Tuskegee, a special teams error by Morehouse College. Well, we talked about it just in the opening, about making this football game special. We were talking about the special teams and how both have good kickers. Watch this. There's a snap right there. Just a low snap. Gets away from it. Archibald does the best. He may have had a chance to kick the ball a second ago. Now he can't do anything, but then he's got to call the fire. Fire. Everybody's got to look to get that pass. They done the big break, the first break. Break of the game goes to Tuskegee. Tuskegee now first and 10 from the 32 yard line and they're going to go right to the ground. And it's Matthew Hazel on the carry. Hazel the senior from Grady High School in Atlanta. But we know we're going to see both tailbacks this week and they are terrific for Tuskegee's Golden Tigers, Florence and Hazel. And there's a look at our drumline starting lineup for Tuskegee. Good offensive line. Thornton, one of the better ones on the right tackle spot. Here we go. Second down and five. And again, it's a handoff. And Hazel finds good running room and is going to take it down to the 19-yard line, and he's got a first down. Now, Matt Hazel was a runner that carried the football quite a bit last season, so don't, don't be surprised that he's carrying the ball early in this ball game. On the defensive side of the football for Morehouse, to keep your eye on John Grant, one of the best tacklers in college football, averaging nearly 14 stops a game. And then the defensive secondary, Santino Hall on the corner, a terrific transfer from Texas Southern. And Tuskegee continues to run the ball. This time, however, not with uh, as much success. Garrett Witt coming from his linebacker spot comes in and makes that hit again. Wilson, you will see Cortland uh, also in this ball game. One of the things that coach talked to me about before the ball game was getting different running backs into the play. They've given the vast majority of all the carries this season have gone to Cortland Florence. So want to give a little change up right now. So that's why Matt Hazel's getting the start today. He's certainly a strong running back. Terrence Jones out of the gun, and the handoff goes to Hazel. Hazel's able to break one tackle, and a flag is down. But Hazel's not down. Hazel is to the end zone and is knocked out of bounds inside the one. Hazel out of bounds on the one-yard line, but there is a flag on the field. And probably where that flag was thrown, Davis, it may actually be on Morehouse. It's a face so, mask. Yeah, and if it is, that's going to that play will stay, will stand. But I was thinking maybe a hold on Tuskegee, but we'll have to wait and see on this. Yeah, it was a face mask. So they'll probably decline that play. Let's see if we can see where that is. Can't really see exactly, but it's somewhere out. It's inside that line of scrimmage right there. So let's take the decline that penalty. For Tuskegee on the one-yard line. There it is. Yeah, but that looked like he got a shoulder as opposed to the face mask. Look at that. But hey, either way it goes, it's Tuskegee ball moving and grooving. Ernest Hunter was going to be whistled on that play. And so here's Tuskegee now inside the one-yard line. First and goal inside the one. Tuskegee trying to take advantage of a botched punt attempt by Morehouse College on their first possession. They started this drive at the 32-yard line, and now they're at the one. Hazel. Oh, and he's driven back, not to the end zone. Terrific play by Morehouse College, and it was Corey Harden coming in from his defensive back spot. Sophomore from Macon, Georgia. One of the top DBs in the SIAC, Corey Harden, came in and laid a hit on him. 23 and a half tackles already this season. They make that 24 and a half. Once again, inside the one, second and goal. Hazel, and he won't get there again. He's dragged down and tossed back. Yeah, 
you, you like the defensive pursuit by Ernest Hunter and the remainder guys. Look at that. Hunter in the backfield, past the point of attack. He and the rest of the Morehouse guys said, no, you're not scoring a touchdown on us. Great play by big Ernest Hunter. Third down and goal, and now the line of scrimmage is back to the three. Play action. Jones, the flip to the end zone. Touchdown, Tuskegee. Touchdown reception made by Dalen Powell. Watch this. Nice play fake. There's a booty. Everybody influences inside. They grab Hazel. Or is it Christopher Bates, I believe that is. Is that 24 or 21? It's can't really 21. See. It's 21. Dalen Powell, just like you said. Nice and wide open. All he's got to do is catch the ball and score the touchdown. Travis Gums is on to add the extra point. High snap. They get it down and they get it up between the uprights. Tuskegee's on the board, an early touchdown pass following a botched special teams play by Morehouse, 7 0 Tuskegee. Period. Morehouse College had a little trouble controlling uh, the snap on their first punt attempt this afternoon. So Tuskegee got the short field. They started from their own, from the Morehouse 32 yard line and promptly moved in for a touchdown and it was a an easy touchdown pass. Jones to Powell had covered three yards and so Tuskegee is in front, seven nothing. Here's the kickoff and Rogers will watch this one sail through his hands and through the back of the end zone. So Morehouse will start first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. And you can see uh, we got some talking going on. Hey, it's the Morehouse Tuskegee game. <laughs> Because they don't like each other. Right. Campuses aren't that far apart. Tuskegee's about uh, maybe about an hour or less from uh, from Columbus, and about an hour and 45 to two hours is Atlanta to Columbus. So hey, a lot of these guys know each other. They played against each other in high school. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of jaw jabbering today. But you you know it doesn't matter how much you talk. You got to play a ball game. Here's the head coach at Morehouse, so the Maroon Tigers, Willard Sism. Great player for the. We're gonna kick again. Apparently we had a penalty. I think it was offside on Tuskegee. Very, very excited about going down and hit somebody, yeah. so they were offside. And now there's the electrifying Mr. Rogers. We anticipate that he's going to get a chance to return this kick. Lamario Mack returned many of the kickoffs early in the season, but as the, the season has progressed for Morehouse, Rogers and the freshman Corey Russ have been returning more and more of the kicks. Travis Gums will be kicking off for Tuskegee. He's a sophomore from Flint, Michigan, and if it's got anything to do with kicking the football, he does it for Tuskegee. Kickoffs, field goals, punts, he does it all. And, you, and it's interesting you said that because both of the kickers, Gums and Archibald, neither one have missed a point after touchdown this, this season. And it's interesting because the games we've seen a lot of kicking has come in place. Oh, you yeah. know, missed PATs, botched attempts, so it's good to see guys that are perfect. Now Rodgers is going to take this one too deep in the end zone. Fighting for extra yards, and he is finally brought down as he reaches the 23-yard line. So give him officially a 23-yard kickoff return, and Mr. Rogers will stay out there as Morehouse College goes on offense. A couple of things I want to watch now, Dave. One, I want to see how the Morehouse team is going to adjust. They had a nice little three and out drive, but they were able to they hit somebody. But for Tuskegee, Rick Comagee's talked about his team putting people away. I know it's early in this football game, but let's see how aggressive they're going to be. Remember what we said, the Tuskegee way. Tough on offense, tough on defense, and special on special teams. And we've gotten a penalty against Tuskegee. It's going to be a personal foul on that kickoff return, so much better field position now. There's Barry Anderson, our referee. So now Morehouse will start this drive, their second possession of the first quarter from the 37-yard line. Morehouse will show you multiple formations, this time four wide receivers, and the handoff goes up the middle. The one back in that look got the football and moments later Tuskegee's defense piled on 
for Tuskegee. The stop was made by Roderick Washington. Out of, the, out of the gum, just a little bit of a delayed draw right there. No place to go, just a host of Golden Tigers in there to make the tackle. Joseph, uh, Jordan Brumbaugh was also in there to make the stop. Brumbaugh, great player, Keystone Heights, Florida. Made a stop at Middle Georgia College before arriving at Tuskegee. On the quarterback keeper, whoa. Just nowhere for the quarterback to go, and it was Frank Walter, a senior from right there in Tuskegee, Booker T. Washington High School. He, he put the leather to the quarterback, Adam Lamb. Yeah, but that enthusiasm after that hit is going to be another 15-yard penalty against Tuskegee. And again, you know, there's one thing to sit there and, and yak, 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 yak. But you got to play the game, and you got to be smart like that. Two big penalties against Tuskegee has given him 30 yards already. Motorhouse hasn't had to do very much. Watch the quarterback Lamb in the shotgun there, looking for Holt, thought he had some place, lost his foot in there. Watch Walker. Bam! Comes in here right now and sends him back. And that's a good play. Take him down. But all the other stuff going on, don't need it. Tuskegee calls a timeout. And we'll take it out with him. Midway in the first period, Tuskegee's got a 7-0 lead, but Morehouse College is driving. Seven nothing. Tuskegee's got the lead on Morehouse College, but Morehouse has the ball. 8:58 to go in the opening period. And Stan, there's a look at just some of the overflow crowd here on hand for this game, the 100th anniversary of the first meeting ever between Tuskegee and Morehouse. It's place, a party. Place is packed. They're expecting 25 to 30,000 here. Could be 35 because they're all on the bank and everywhere else. John David Washington on the carry and takes it to the 46-yard line. And we want to remind you that this first half is brought to you by Chrysler. And we might as well get this out of the way now. John David Washington has uh, drawn quite a lot of attention around black college sports this year because he is the son of the famous movie actor Denzel Washington. Um, but he doesn't have the big head by any stretch of the imagination. He's come in to this team and uh, watched the first couple of games but has been coming on game by game in recent games and is going to be one of the best runners in this conference. 73 carries already, 471 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He's doing it on his own and that's the way they want it. That's the way he's doing it. Second down and eight. The quarterback keeper, it's Lamb. And Lamb runs out of bounds, and he is going to be officially marked out at the 39-yard line, just a yard shy of the first down. Very impressed with Lamb's running ability. Again, sees nobody open. Good job by Tuskegee in coverage. And Lamb, who's a good athlete, a senior, goes about six feet tall, sees nowhere to go, so he decides to run the football, makes a smart decision, makes it an easy third down and short. Lamb, six foot, 185, a senior from Houston. He transferred in here after three years as the starter at 1AA Texas Southern. He is fifth in passing yards per game in this league. And he's going to keep the football. He's got the first down with a terrific fake down to the 26 yard line. So after giving up an early touchdown, Tuskegee now on their heels a bit, although they continue to lead 7-0. Great play calling by the staff of Morehouse. Shotgun make the fake influence. Everybody right. Quarterback keeper Lamb's a kid that can pick up some yards. We saw it on the first play. He does it again there. Keeps those chains moving for the first down. First and 10 for Morehouse College at the Tuskegee 26, and now Morehouse is going to burn a timeout. So both teams here in the opening moments have burned a timeout. Each team now left with two for the remainder of the first half. Morehouse College going to talk things over. We'll take a break with them. Tuskegee leads 7-0. Well, the bands are fired up, and we're fired up, too. Happy to be here in Columbus, Georgia for this game. Tuskegee with an early 7-0 lead on Morehouse. First and 10 for Morehouse at the 26-yard line. The fake to Washington. Here's Lamb on the rollout, trying to go right. Finally, Cox it, throws it incomplete. That was a good pass, threw it away. You know, the, the thing that, that 
right now in this football game, you know, we got about seven and seven minutes and some change left. There's no rhythm in the ball game. You got penalties. You've had some stoppage. You get the clock right. Quarterbacks don't like what they've seen. They've called timeouts. And for a team like Morehouse, they want to be ball control. What that means, they've got to go to the line of scrimmage, see what they got, run a play, pick up three, four yards, keep drives going to handle that football. And they're not being able to get in that rhythm. Obviously, they've been helped by 30 yards of penalties against Tuskegee. Right now, you've got Rodgers up in the slot, man coverage. Think about it. Trips to the left this time, and the handoff goes to Washington, and he's going to try to plow behind the right side of that offensive line, and he really had nowhere to go. Couldn't open it up. It's going to be third down and long. You know, last week, Albany State had a lot of success running the football against this Tuskegee defense. Yeah, and that was one of the things that concerned Coach Kamaji. He didn't feel his guys really brought it that week. They didn't. When they got hit in the mouth, they didn't respond like that. Albany State's a very good team. You expect better out of Tuskegee. Right now, the middle of that defensive line for Tuskegee, very strong. Four wide receivers, one back. Washington in a shotgun set. Here's the snap to Lamb. And Lamb is sacked. Dropped at the 35-yard line. And firing through that time and making the stop is Andre Benz, inside linebacker, a freshman from Miami and Miami Carroll City High School. Andre Benz, a strong defender. The rover back comes out of no place. They ran a little twist right there. You can't see it, but you'll see Benz coming at the top of the screen, bringing him down. Watch it. A solid tackle, his fifth tackle for loss this season. Well, the last punt was a real adventure for Morehouse. This time, the punt will come from the 34-yard line. The snap is good. The kick is a high floater that is going to land inside the 20-yard line. It takes a Tuskegee bounce, but will be down at the 16-yard line. So, Stan, good job by the Tuskegee defense. Morehouse had it first and 10 at the Tuskegee 26. They come away with no points. And you think about the fact, again, that, that two of the big plays in that drive were, were penalties of 15 yards. It actually moved it. So, again, yeah, the Tuskegee defense doing what they want to do. Morehouse wanted to try to be ball control right now, not really having the chance to do that. Now it's going to be interesting to see how Tuskegee is going to approach this on the offensive end. Are they going to grind it out? Are they going to try to go for the big play and really take the heart out of this Morehouse team early? The Player of the week this week in the SIAC was Warren Major of Albany State. He threw for a touchdown and ran for two more against that Tuskegee defense last week in a 20 or in a 40 to 20 upset. First down pass by Tuskegee this time picks up limited yardage, maybe a pair of yards. Pass was complete to Kylan Kimball, a senior from Birmingham. You'll see a lot of multiple sets. That time they had two wides of both sides. Kimball inside the slot and tried to get him on the little quick screen, but there was no place to go. Great job of defending it by Morehouse is uh, Travis Spurley. Give him four yards. It'll be second down and along six. Four wide this time. Trips to the left. And a bad snap, but Jones is able to get it. And then the ball is slapped, and that may go as a lateral. So the Morehouse defense in hot pursuit. <laughs> and uh, Kimball was forced to be in a position where he was chasing the ball with lots of defenders around him. Bad snap. Let's see. You can see Kimball. Yeah, that's a lateral. It's deflected back. And he was smart. Keep playing. And then this great pursuit by Morehouse. Now, is this a late hit? Oh, man. What a bad snap. Bad step. Now watch Kimball. Kimball catches on the bounce. Might have been a shortstop in a past life. But watch this. Take it out. Now watch. Right at the end of the play, bam, a little bit, a little aggression right that time by Morehouse, John Grant. John Grant, one of the leading tacklers in the SIAC. Just wanted to let him know, Colin, I'm around. I'm around. All right, they're going to try again out of the shotgun. The, the center is Charles Chapman, a freshman from Magnolia, Alabama. This is Jones. Jones lets it go. The pass is... Going to be ruled a catch at the 40-yard line. That is a completed pass. And it's Kylan Kimball. Kimball's got it up at the 40 for a first down. That was a great diving grab. What you like about this, Terrence Jones under a lot of pressure. And I you know, might have been past the line of scrimmage. I guess not. But watch this. Now watch Kimball. Keep moving. Keep moving. Gives a hand. Says, hey, I'm open. And then gets under the football. Great catch. The Morehouse guy said no catch. The official said, oh, yeah, that's a big-time catch. Move him change. Colin Kimball with a good reception. So it's a first down at the 40-yard line. Deep handoff. 
This is going to go to Hazel. And Hazel breaks through the first wave and is brought down at the 46-yard line. That's a gain of six on first down. The word that Rick Comagy described in, in, in Hazel was consistent. He's a guy that will give you everything he's got. Came into this game with almost 230 yards, nice average of six. And again, a guy over the last two years that they've been able to pin on, he hasn't always been their premier back. This year, Cortland Florence has come in done some damage hazel taking that role just taking what they give me he's done a very good job in his opportunity to start today he's looked real good early second down and four here comes hazel again he's got the first down he's got more than that he is into morehouse territory and he's down to the 46. Uh, check it we've uh, had our first carry of the day by courtland florence so florence comes into the game and looks good on his first carry and quickly tuskegee coming back up to the line of scrimmage Jones calling the play at the line. Out of the eye this time. Again, it's the tailback Florence. And Florence will rush it down to the 38-yard line. Two schools of thought, Dave. One, I know Rick Comagy's talked about, you know, that Florence was carrying the ball so much so early in the season. He's had five games of over 100 yards in rushing that he wanted to try to, you know, spread the wealth. So that's why Matt Hazel start. Or the other was, well, maybe he wasn't satisfied with his performance last week and wanted to shake him up. Whatever it was, two carries by Cortland Florence. He's picked up big yardage. Florence was the co-offensive player of the week in this conference for his efforts against Winston-Salem State, and that time he tried to get outside, and that was a good open field tackle by Corey Harden before he could really get rolling. We told you Corey Harden, one of the better defenders in the SIAC, and again, when you've got a running back like Florence, he's fresh, he comes out to watch him, break away, gets out the pack, he's got the speed, can't quite turn the corner, and great textbook tackling that time by Harden. Stayed low, took him to the outside, brought him down. Good play. Willard Sism says that Harden Harden is a work in progress and can potentially be a very good player and a future star at Morehouse. Going to go to the fullback this time and just know where to go. The fullback that time got the ball. Robert Nixon or uh, Nicholson, a senior from Cuthbert, Georgia, and on the defense that time, Scantling. Desmond Scantling came in and made the stop. He's a transfer from Tennessee State. <laughs> Robert Nicholson, only two carries. So they said, okay, here's your carry. All right, we're done there. Just keep blocking the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, you designated one carry. You got your ticket punched. Now get back there and hit somebody. Second down and eight. Out of the gun with dual backs this time and three wide receivers. It's Hazel on the carry, and now the Morehouse defense beginning to stiffen up quite a bit. Tyrone Brown, senior defensive tackle from Bell Glade, Florida, made the stop. Boy, you talk about a hot bet of college football. Oh, Bell Glade, Florida. Oh, yeah, and a good job by Tyrone in the defensive line of standing home. Out of the shotgun, you've got people wide to both sides. They run the draw inside the Hazel. Tyrone stayed home, made the good defensive play, and it sets up one of those long third down situations for uh, Tuskegee. Tuskegee is third in this conference in third down conversions at 35 percent four wide outs to the right this time here's the pass incomplete so that morehouse defense holds on third down and long tried to get the ball out to james lewis and the junior wide receiver from Stone Mountain, Georgia, and Jose City Community College couldn't hold the pass. You've seen a lot of this formation this season by lots of schools. Three or four wide receivers, three to one side, and try to send the inside guy underneath as the other guys clear the zone. That time the pass a little low under pressure to James Lewis didn't quite hold on. Now we get an opportunity to see what Travis can do on the kick game. Again, special teams, I think, field position, so very important in a game like today. Santino Hall is back to receive this punt. And he will watch it. Oh, what a great bounce for Tuskegee. And it's going to be down at the three-yard line. Travis Gums, the sophomore from Flint with a terrific punt. And Morehouse has got the football back, but in the shadow of their own goalpost at the three-yard line. It's a good look at Travis. He's tops in punting in this conference, 41.2 yards per punt. He has had one block. Well, I think that was like his eighth punt this season where it's inside 20, inside the 20. So, again, you know, when your kicker is a weapon, 
and your kicking game can be very spe with the word special and special teams you've got a chance to win hence the reason that this this Tuskegee team's won 20 out of 30 ball games Morehouse tries to, to go to the fullback and Donald Joyce is not having it Uh, well, that's a pretty good average, would yeah. you say, Stan? That 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 tells what's happening. If you're Morehouse now, you've got to be very careful in what you're running offensively when you've run 13 plays and you've lost yards on five of them. Almost half of what you've done on your offensive set has been going backwards. Going to run again. This time it's Washington, and he'll take it out to the five. And right now Tuskegee's winning the battle up front. They're getting a good surge up front, and again it's Big Brown. Big Tyrone Brown. He's a load, isn't he? Now, wait a minute. He's listed at 280. I'm sorry. He that's Donald that. Joyce. That's Donald Joyce. Oh, all right. <laughs> and he's listed at 340, and that's not a biscuit shot of it either. <laughs> Stand by. Stand by. We've come to the end of the first period. And Tuskegee has a 7 nothing lead in one of the biggest plays in this opening period. A botched punt attempt by Morehouse College. Tuskegee converted that into a short touchdown pass. We're going to the second period. Tuskegee leads Morehouse College 7 nothing. Set to begin the second period of the 67th annual Tuskegee Morehouse Classic. And Tuskegee has a 7 nothing lead on Morehouse College. Morehouse backed up in the shadow of their own end zone at the five yard line facing third down and nine. Four wide receivers, three to the left this time for the Maroon Tigers. Pass incomplete. Intended for Lamario Mack. Our first quarter stats, they're brought to you by Drumline. And look at those rushing stats by Tuskegee and Morehouse College with a big fat zero and throwing the football in the first 15 minutes. The rushing stats don't surprise me for Tuskegee. Obviously, the passing does for Morehouse. But you got to remember, Morehouse really hasn't been in good situations to throw the football unless they want to make the big play. They've been back at their goal line. So, again, you got to be conservative sometimes in play call and be smart. Morehouse has got to be patient. That offense will go third punt of the day already for Byron Archibald that is a bomb great punt all the way back to the 44 yard line and the return by Jeffrey Stanton and Stanton will take it back into Morehouse territory to the 42 yard line wow what a punt that punt was 52 yards So Tuskegee looking to build on a 7-0 lead. Now takes over the ball. First and 10 at the Morehouse 42-yard line. They've got great field position. They scored the only touchdown in this game after starting a drive at the Morehouse 32 on their first possession of the game. Handoff. Nowhere to go for Hazel as he tries to bounce it to the outside. He's going to be dropped for a loss of two. Hazel having a nice first first quarter. Eight carries for 35 yards. Again, when you've got an opportunity to have thunder and lightning, two different running backs that have different styles, and Hazel coming in this ball game, being a senior, understands the magnitude of this ball game, a steady player. That just bodes well for the offense of Tuskegee. Hazel averaging six yards a carry and about 46 ground yards a game. Still looking, though, for his first touchdown of the year. Difficult situation there, second and long. Another handoff, and this time Hazel is dropped, but not before he reaches the 36-yard line. Thomas Howard, the strong safety, number 26, a senior from Riverdale, Georgia, a four-year starter and the co-captain of Morehouse College, came up and made the stop. Offensive line of Tuskegee doing a very good job at the point of impact, getting people off the football, and it's allowing these running backs, both Hazel and Cortland, to pick up good yardage. So on second down and long, Tuskegee had enough confidence in their rushing attack to run the football. Now facing third down and five. Three-step drop, the pass is caught. And it is just enough for a first down at the 31-yard line. The reception 
was made by Kenneth Horton, a junior from Hollywood, Florida, and a transfer from Savannah State. I like that. It's a three-step drop. You need three yards. You take your route five yards. Kenneth Horton, one of the four wide receivers for this Tuskegee team, that has 15 or more receptions. You do exactly what you've got to do to get the first down. So many times you see receivers, you need three yards. They run a three- or two-yard route. You end up short. He needed three. He picked. He took five, got the ball, keep the first down drive going. Horton eighth in the conference with 3.6 receptions a game. Up the middle. And Hazel cracks his way down to the 26-yard line. And, man, you really got a sense of it that time, Stan. The pads are popping. Quentin Dudley at, at right guard. Charlie Thornton, Robert Bailey to center. Elliott, the other guard. And Lawrence, those guys average. Check this out. 325 pounds among the offensive line. So you had to have a big bust to get those guys from <laughs> Tuskegee over to Columbus. But a good job on the offensive line right now, Tuskegee creating holes. Hazel again. And a great surge up front, and he is very close to the first down. Needed to get inside the 21-yard the line. And it's going to be close. Watch this. Take. Look at that big hole right there. And then the lead block by Nicholson gives him a couple extra yards, and you like that. Travis Tavares Williams also making it. Watch that hit. Boom, right there. That clears out two yards, knocking people back, knocking John Grant back. He doesn't like that, but a big play again on first down. Now it becomes easier if your offensive staff of Tuskegee to run second and second, third yard plays. I think they're going to measure for this, Dave. Probably going to be a little short. Missed it by that much. much. All right, no way they've been winning the battle up front. Oh, you keep it on the ground. Got to believe you keep it on the ground. But this is a good situation. Third and about an inch, an inch and a half. You know, inside your own 25-yard line. I don't have a problem with them going deep. I think you know this is one of the times where you stretch out the defense. Of the first 21 offensive plays for Tuskegee this afternoon, they have rushed the ball 16 times. And that's back to old-fashioned, hard-nosed football, the Tuskegee way. I think he got it. It's going to be close. Fourth down conversion for Tuskegee. They are just 5 of 14, 35%. Morehouse thinks they've uh, they've held him. It's going to be close. He's got to get the nose of the football actually over the 21 yard line. Well, I, I don't think, think he I don't got think it. he made it. Yeah, they're not even going to measure that. Now wait a minute, that was fourth down, wasn't it? No, this is fourth down. Okay, this, this is fourth, fourth down this coming fourth. up. Fourth down conversion rate. 36%. This will be their 15th fourth down conversion try. Simple play, quarterback sneak. Morehouse has given up only four 15 fourth down conversions this year. Morehouse backfield look. And Hazel trying to break outside. He has got the first down. He's got more than that. He'll take it down to the 13 yard line. So on fourth down. They pitch it wide, they go left, they pick up the first down and more. Great call, unbalanced right and to the right side. Everybody's going that way. You've got less players on the left. Hazel, great strength, great speed. You needed one, he gets you about six. Great determination by Matt Hazel, making the best out of his start today. So Tuskegee with a seven nothing lead, now in the red zone. First and 10 at the Morehouse 13. Going to go to the power set. No wide receivers in this formation. And we have whistles and maybe too much time. And that is the call. Boy, those plays will kill you. You know, you got first and 10 in a very, very tough part of the field. First and 10 at your opponent's 13-yard line. Now, instead of first and 10, you'll start first and 15. And this is also an area of the field where it gets shorter. It shrinks because you've got less room to go. So defenses can pack things in. You get it. You get a lot of man coverage right there with your, with your DBs against wide receivers. But also, you'll see seven, eight, nine guys in the box, just like right now. Oh, we had a little trouble with the play clock at the beginning of this game. And that time, it clicked down to zero. And... Despite first and 15, Tuskegee continues to pound the ball on the ground, and it's Hazel again trying the left side. Hazel picks up about 
six yards. I'll make it five yards on that carry. It'll be second down and ten. Charles Mosby does a great job on his and his line spot of clearing out some room. But what Tuskegee's also doing, it's a warm day on the field. They're rotating their, their offensive line right now, getting a couple extra guys in, giving some bodies some fresh legs, and that's one reason they're being able to blow more off, off the ball, two or three yards per play. Again, it's Hazel. Defended well that time by Morehouse. Nowhere to go as he tried the, the left side again. Nelson came over and made the stop. You know, Hazel's off to a good start. Had 35 yards on the ground in the first period. Tuskegee's had a 100-yard rusher in 20 of their last 22 games. Yeah, but that 20, most of those have been the kid Wilson last year, and then this season it's been my man, you know, Cortland Florence. But right. again, he said, I'm going to shake some things up. You're going to have some different looks. Matt Hazel has certainly answered the bell so far in this ballgame. This is the ninth play of the drive. Trips to the right. Jones lets it go to the end zone. Intercepted by Morehouse. Morehouse makes the interception. The Morehouse defense answers the call. Great pressure this time on Jones, forcing them out. Maybe should have thrown that pass and throw it out of bounds. Hey, There's hey, Ronald hey. Smalls there, right in the spot. Taking the outside boundary away from it. Cuts back up, then makes the play. Hands it to the linesman and says, yeah, it's going our way. Great pick off that time by Morehouse. All right, so Smalls, a senior from Maryland. He returned an interception against Benedict for a two-point on a botched two-point conversion attempt earlier this year, and that's a big, big play for the Morehouse defense. Here's Washington. Washington crosses the five and gets up near the seven-yard line for a gain of three on first down. But, Dave, most of this football game has been played with, with the guys from Morehouse back against the goal line. You think about the punt a moment ago that gave them this field position, and now, even though they got the interception, they're starting that drive at their two, three-yard line. So it, 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 makes, it puts a toll on you offensively. You've got to run perfect plays. You've got to move the football. Well, Morehouse really has not had much field position at all here in the first half. Three-step drop. The pass in and out of the hands of Rodgers. Boy, Lamb put it right on number three's big number three, and he couldn't hold it. You got, you got Rodgers at the top of your screen. Lamb really put some mustard on that ball, just didn't watch it in, and nearly intercepted. If you just take a look, Frank Walker's right there. Walker can react a second quicker. He picks it off and puts six on the board. Rodgers has got to watch that ball in his hands. Boy, Tuskegee comes onto the field with six defensive substitutions on third down. Lamb. On the sprint out, the throw caught at the 16-yard line and a first down. And that time he came right back to his favorite target, Rodgers, who made a clutch catch, and they moved the chain. There's a reason why he's all SIAC and a preseason All-America. Rodgers does a great job of getting away from the defender. Goes down. You don't see it right now, but he does a great stop, gives him some space, concentration catch. He didn't do it on the play before. He certainly does that time. From Riverside High School, Durham, North Carolina, <laughs> Kenneth Rodgers. Rodgers, first in the conference in receiving yards a game. The only receiver in this conference averaging over 100. He's averaging 104 per game. First and 10 for Morehouse. Speed option. Lamb just trying to stay alive, and he's finally twisted down back, and they're going to give him a pretty decent spot. The, the line of scrimmage is going to be the 12-yard line. Boy, that play went wrong from the snap. Again, you get, look at that. You get a great view right there. There's the fake right there. Bobbles the ball, and Jeffrey Stanton and the rest of the crew just coming in there and making the play again. Smart on Lamb's play. Don't try to make any more out of a bad play than you can. Go down. But now, second down, 13 yards to go. What do you do? I, I like Rodgers now. He's getting in the rhythm. He dropped that first pass, missed it. He got the second one. You know, you look for Rodgers. Our guy we haven't called his name, Emmanuel Zanders, also in the slot. Good receiver. Lamario Lamar Mack also in there, a wide receiver. Trying to set up a screen pass, and 
Lamb was backpedaling furiously, and there were a trio of Tuskegee defenders bearing down on him. He got the ball away incomplete. It's third and long. Lamb really feeling heat by the interior of this line of, of, of Tuskegee. And again, what I look to see them do maybe as this game goes, if he has pressure inside, try to see if you can roll him out a little bit, or actually, as you mentioned, this in, set that little soft screen up. But they're going to have to do something to eliminate some of the pressure that Lamb is having because he's rolling, he's falling down, he's on his back every time he tries to attempt to pass. Morehouse is second in the conference in third down conversions at 35%. He looked pretty good last time out against Kentucky State. Here's Lamb on a rollout. And he is sacked. And that ball is going to be ruled incomplete. And I think actually that's a break for Morehouse. That could have very easily been ruled a fumble. Great pressure once again. Watch the right side. Now watch those guys coming in there for Tuskegee. You see Jordan Brambaugh and the rest Ooh. of the crew. Stanton comes up there, makes a play. You can see his arm does go forward. It's a, it's a pass, and he just got rid of this. And what's that on the other side of the play? Stanton, we've called his name a couple of times with a return, and also they a big hit. Archibald now with another punt. Short kick this time after a 52-yarder in his last effort. It takes a Tuskegee bounce and will be downed at the 38-yard line. And now we got a flag down because uh, we've got some extracurriculars going on out on the field. I was watching that the whole time. Freeman Lynn, sophomore out of Atlanta, Brandon Hooks. Those guys were just engaged, never let go, push, shove. It'll be interesting to see who, who got this call on because it's one of those first hit, second hits. <laughs> That's a good call. That's a good call. Tuskegee's got great field position at the Morehouse 37-yard line, and Tuskegee leads Morehouse 7-0 second period. Morehouse, six minutes to go in the first half. We'd like to thank MBC Network for carrying this live black college football game. If you'd like to see more black college games, call your local cable operator for MBC Network. First and ten. Jones gets away for a moment, and then he has swarmed under. That's going to be a sack for Morehouse. And it's big Tyrone Brown. Great job inside. They got to turn the Tigers loose right there. John Grant comes up, doesn't make the first play, but then there's Tyrone Brown, Ernest Hunter, and the rest of the crew coming in to make the good play. And again, that'll take momentum away from you. Good job by the Morehouse D. Boy, Tuskegee has just had great field position for nearly every possession stand here in the second half, or the first half, rather. And Morehouse has done a good job defensively. They trail only 7-0. And there's nowhere to go as Tuskegee continues to go the wrong way on second down. A deep handoff and just nowhere to go for Florence that time. And the stop was made by Desmond Scantling again. And Dave, you're exactly right. I mean, give the Morehouse defense a lot of credit. They've had their backs against the wall this entire football game. The touchdown score was pretty much a fluke play. And they've really, they really, you know, you look at that 110 yards of Tuskegee offense. Hazel's had a good game. But again, no big breakaway plays. Morehouse's offense has got to get cracked. On third and long, two wide receivers to the right. Jones still has it and now he's brought down second sack in the series and Scantling was just a monster on that series defensively for Morehouse College a great job by the defensive backs they go with six defensive backs that time and you kids watch that nobody there nobody yet and all of a sudden boom they come in and co converge you like that for the Morehouse guys the Morehouse coaches are next door they're very excited about that defensive play Travis Gums set to punt the football. Back to receive it is Santino Hall. Hall's fourth in punt returns in this conference, 8.5 yards per return. This one's going to turn over, and Hall is going to watch it bounce, and look at this. What a great roll inside the five. So Gums, for the second time here in the first half, drops a punt inside the five-yard line against Morehouse. Going to take a break. Back in a moment. Tuskegee 7, Morehouse College nothing. Tuskegee with a 7 nothing lead on Morehouse. And Travis Gums has really been doing a terrific job punting the football here in the first half. And 
Stan, I think you got to put him in the hopper as the candidate for our drum line most viable player today. He's got the beat hand, with his feet. Hand, hand, <laughs> yeah, he does. I get it. Kicker, kicker, drum line. You get it? You get, I'm it? With you get you. that? You got that? Uh, we're on the same page with that. First down, long pass intended for Rodgers. He's got it. Was he inbounds? No. Ruled out of bounds. Oh, what a great catch. But he was out of bounds. And so now that just goes as a long incompletion, second down and 10. We were talking about going for some big plays a little longer. I like the idea of Morehouse that time, just making that, trying to throw deep, stretch his defense. Watch Rodgers, great concentration. You can clearly see both right and left leg out of bounds with a great catch and good concentration by Kenneth Rogers. A lot of people, he's from Durham, but a lot of people in Solid City, North Carolina, how proud of him. He's a homeboy kind of sort of. I've been there. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> Durham and South City. South City and Durham. <laughs> Second and ten. I'll take you there one day. Take it. Up near the nine-yard line. Nathaniel Zachary. The He's got family there. Nathaniel Zachary on the carry. He's a senior from Orlando, and he, he's kind of turned into a forgotten man in the running game for Morehouse College with the development of John David Washington. He's a two-time all-conference performer. He was kind of battling some injuries at the early portion of the year, and as Washington's career has begun, uh, began to blossom, uh, he, he had to get some carries somewhere, and they came right out of Zachary's back pocket. Picked up over 700 yards last season, as you said, all SIAC two years ago. And is a good player, but injuries got him, and John Davis had some good games. Lamb is going to tuck it, and he's going to carry it out beyond the 20-yard line, and that's another third down conversion for Morehouse. And even though this may not be a drive in which they're going to get the tying touchdown, they just need to win some of the battles for field position. Well, Lamb has been their biggest offensive weapon. They did have that one pass to Rodgers, but Lamb's legs have carried him a long way today. And again, stretching, almost a ground can cause a fumble, so it's going to keep the ball. But again, getting the first down, move the chance. You'd like to see Morehouse right now put together a solid drive. If nothing else, to get from the behind the end zone. They, they've had to back to the end zone all game long. First and ten. Play action. Here's Lamb. Trying to get out of the pocket. The throw is caught. The reception up to the 31-yard line. And that's the big guy. That's Hunter. Now Hunter made like a, a, a huge tackle on a on an attempted defensive line stand early in the game, and here he makes a big catch. As nice tight end. play fake right there to Zachary. Frees up the back. You see someone across the lane, but there again, Hunter just comes out into the flat, is able to catch the ball. He's had a big defensive hit, and now he's catching the ball. Look at that. Hey, the big fella going both ways. Will, Willard Sism says, you know, he, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he does have the ability to get behind a linebacker and get up the field. Good he also calls him the, Yeah, he says he's the second best offensive lineman they've got. Second and a yard, and well, you know, it just goes to show that if we're going to give any love to Hunter, he's going to jump offside. So instead of second and a yard, now it's second and six. Well, you saw a moment ago in that graphic, you know, they've started at their four, their five, and their 38 on the previous three starts. Not great offensive field position. Right now, this has been the most impressive drive for Morehouse. Again, stopped right now by an illegal procedure penalty. Yeah, you know, I was very impressed when I got a chance to talk to Coach Sissom because he said he wanted his team to be great on defense, and today the defense has been good. He said error-free on offense. We've seen a few errors and then also have a solid kicking game, and the kicking game until today has been very solid. The one bad snap early in the ball game cost him seven points, but again, a solid football team. He's got a great foundation developer here at Morehouse. Play action, Lamb. The pass is caught. Great collision at the point. And the ball carrier is dropped. That's Easton Hood, a sophomore from Atlanta. He did a great job to catch that ball. Influence again, play fake. You see the linebackers take the fake. And again, that gives a chance to get his hood out there. But it doesn't even matter because there's my man coming up and making a big stick. Drayton Florence, the free safety, a senior from Ocala, made the stop. Florence has played some great football this year for Tuskegee. He was the conference defensive player of the week on September 21st for his efforts against Miles. 
now I think we're going to have to reset the, the play yeah, clock. Yeah, he didn't quite reset. It's at zero, so they'll get him back up there. And again, if I'm, this is a good chance for Morehouse now. Get to the line of scrimmage, look over the defense, call the play, see if you can get Tuskegee maybe napping. We're down to a minute 35 to go in the first half. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Morehouse out of the shotgun facing a third down and two. There's the handoff, and it is a first down carry. Zachary tunnels his way off the right side for three yards. Keep in mind, Byron Archibald's longest field goal attempt of the season was a 42-yarder early in the year against North Carolina Central. So they still got to get another 25, 30, maybe 35 yards to get in his range. On first and 10, this is a quarterback draw all the way. And Lamb got away momentarily, but now is going to be dropped for a yard loss. Meanwhile, the clock continues to run. 107, 106, 105. Morehouse opting not to burn a timeout here. Four wide receivers as Lamb operates from the gun. Pass is knocked away. Incomplete. Nice defensive play made by Ramon Nickerson. Freshman from Phoenix City, Alabama. In right Central across High the School. street, right across the river, right here. It's a good pass out there. All day long, long. Nickerson, who was a converted, then playing linebacker, was a defensive back. Great, this great coverage gets in there with the outside hand and makes that deflection. That ball thrown just about a half second too late. He's going to take that for six. He's played on this field many times. Tuskegee's defense has done a good job today against Morehouse. They've got a shutout going, and now Morehouse is facing third down and 11 with 53 seconds remaining in the first half. This is a big possession if you're a Morehouse fan. Keep the change. Remember last week, the final seconds of the quarter, Hayes State gave up a touchdown. Passes incomplete. Rodgers appeared to have it for a moment but could not hold on, and so it's fourth down. Stops the clock with 47 seconds in the first half. So Tuskegee gets the ball back. They'll have the use of a timeout. Travis Gooms is a good kicker. I mean, again, this is the same kind of scenario we had last Saturday in the Lane Kentucky State game. Lane got the ball back with about 25 seconds ago. A couple of plays, a couple of plays, then hit the big one just as the horn went off. And that really, I think, changed that football game last it Saturday. It did. It really did. Another bad snap. Ar Archibald is able to handle this one and get it out of there. And it will go out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Got to think that we're going to have some discussions about special teams in the Morehouse locker room at halftime. 38 seconds to go in the first half. Tuskegee's got the ball. Down to the end of the first half. Inside of 30 seconds to go now. Tuskegee's got the ball. First and 10 at their own 46-yard line. They have two timeouts remaining. Going with three wide receivers and two running backs. Here comes Florence, and Florence is able to break a couple of tackles and take it up to the 48-yard line. That's a great three-yard run. And now a, a flag comes in, and it stops the clock with 15 seconds in the first half. I saw Florence on the, on the ground. I was actually trying to look at Coach Rick Comagy and see if he was going to let this clock run and he called that timeout. Then you kind of looked up and you saw Florence kind of coming out of the pile. So you, you tend to think this may be on, on the Morehouse guys. And if it's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct, conduct penalty. But, you know, you got to be smarter than that, especially in the situation. If it's on Morehouse, another bad penalty. Tuskegee knows better as well. That takes them, really must kills their drive. No, we, that's fair enough. <laughs> Offset. Let's take another look and see if we can pick it up. Well, you can see Florence, again, just trying to pick up a few yards. I'm kind of surprised they decide to run the ball after the break, maybe try to take a look at the end zone. And then you can see just a little pushing and you know, a little shoving right there. Watch this. Watch this at the end of the game. You kick, oh, oh, you can't kick him. Oh. He kicked him back. Well, they always said if somebody hits you, hit them back. Darius Baker just took that you know, kick for a kick. Hey, you know what? Um, <laughs> on this series... <laughs> That started with less than a minute to go in the first half. Tuskegee slipped a new quarterback into the game. John Flynn, number seven, a sophomore from Elwood, Georgia, and a transfer from Jackson State, now the quarterback. He threw a touchdown pass in their last game. I think, you know, not, not questioning Rick Combs, he's won a lot more football games than I have, but I think you throw it. I think you take one attempt at, uh, you know, at trying to throw the ball down the field. For some reason, the clock went out. 
the clock ran down. I, didn't they get the ball possession with about 25, 30 seconds? They, to go? The, so they've the, got to put some more time. They've got the to put 14.5 seconds back on the clock. That's when Tuskegee called the second of their three timeouts. Very There's good. 14.5 to go, and Tuskegee's got one timeout left. Yeah, see, we're trying to figure out this clock deal right now. But we're going to put a couple of seconds back 14. on the clock. 14.5 is what you said? 14.5. 14.5, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, across the way, the flag came out, and the fans are going nuts. And the, and the official, yeah, and the crowd's going nuts. Everybody's <laughs> having a good time. And the, and the referee just told uh, Coma G's, Coach Coma G's, we're going to keep this on the watch on the field. We won't reset it. I'll keep the time down on the field 14.5 all right so Tuskegee has four wide receivers now on second down and six and they do have one timeout remaining is this it could have been a flanker pass but instead it's a flanker screen and it's Kylan Kimball and he can really get up the field quickly takes it down to the Morehouse 43 yard line Nice little quick screen again. He had the thought maybe he was going to try to throw the football, but actually he's probably screen all the way. Everybody in pass block mode. And then this is the mistake if you're Tuskegee. I mean, Morehouse, they took him out of bounds. You want to kind of keep him inbounds, let the clock roll down. Under 10 seconds, I'm sure. I think they've got about 10 seconds left. So, and, and now Flynn is going to call Tuskegee's last time out. I'm sure the coach really didn't want to do that. But with about 10 seconds remaining, and they are keeping the official time on the field, so we're not sure exactly how much time's remaining. You got time for two plays. Yeah. So now that you're out of timeouts, this play has got to cover 20 yards and get out of bounds. Got to get it to the sideline, exactly. Or just let it roll out, and we'll call it a night. You know what? I think this would be a great time to promote the Chrysler halftime show that yeah. we're gearing we're, up we're for. We're on that, aren't we? We're on that show. Yeah. We're, we're, we're on camera. We're, we're on that show. We're, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> we're going to have highlights. We're going to have stats. We've got a whole press Both box full bands. Of, MVP, of MVPs. Both the bands and maybe have the cheerleaders. And they got Miss, you know, Miss Tuskegee. Her court may come by here. And the, and the Hampton. Uh, Ham really? And the Morehouse crowd. Their, their court may come up. Here. A lot of people coming up. Here. Okay. We got, we got VIP. Not, not enough room in the box where everybody's coming. But we'll do the best we can. I guess, folks, you can really sense we're having a good time <laughs> here in Columbus, Georgia this weekend. It's a great atmosphere for this game. 100th anniversary of the first meeting ever between Tuskegee and Morehouse College. Here we go on first down. This is Flynn, and Flynn's going to roll to his left. And after the timeout, the ball is loose. Still loose. Still loose. And I think Morehouse has got it. But that may be the final play of the first half. And that is the end of the first half. Flynn back to pass, gets pressure, and doing a great job. And you can see at the end of that play, just great pursuit. Robert Kilpatrick and the rest of the bunch coming in. And, and there's a lot of stuff going on down at the bottom of that pile. Can't really tell who's got it. Morehouse recovered. It doesn't matter because the band's taking the field. The homecoming court circling. Everybody's excited. It's time to go to the Chrysler MC pregame show. I'm I think tired. that's going to go officially as a bubble go. recovery for Ooh. Ernest Hunter. We're at halftime. Tuskegee 7, Morehouse nothing. Watching band. I'm Stan Luter, and I'm very honored to have one of Catch the game. Play hard. Play rough. Be strong. Be tough. Take charge. Dig deep. Hold on. Yo. Bring heat. Yo, from state to state, from field to court, hoping everybody enjoys the game and feel the sport. Just remember we're fighting to win the game like Denzel and remember the Titans. Look, take it out of your enemy because it gets intense. The crowd cheers and you feel the energy and the beat is getting me to a point of height in which both teams better be. Play hard. You better play rough. Entertainment of art. I just hope that you know you're dealing with NBC Sports. Back to back. Make sure that you watch games from the CIAA, MEAC, and SWAC. SIAC's got you. But it ain't over till you.
your head this or we will rock you. You play hard, you gotta play rough, you gotta be strong, you gotta be tough, you gotta take charge, you gotta dig deep, you gotta hold on, you gotta break me, you gotta play hard, you gotta play rough, you gotta be strong, you gotta be tough, you gotta take charge, you gotta dig deep, you gotta hold on, you gotta break me. From state to state, from field to court, hoping everybody enjoys the game and feels the sport. Just remember we fought to win the game. Like HBCU sports, Love. take it out on your enemy, cause it gets intense to cry tears and you feel the energy and the beat is getting me huh? to a point of hype in which both teams you better be. Live on NBC. It was a half that really didn't have a lot of offense for Morehouse. As you can see, yards per play, just 1.9. And uh, total yards, really not a lot of total yards in this game. 119 for Tuskegee. Their touchdown drive, the only scoring drive of the game, was uh, 32 yards. Sacks in the game, both teams had a couple. Two sacks for Tuskegee, three sacks for Morehouse. And right now, Stan, I mean, this game is all even. I mean, Tuskegee's got a 7-0 lead. I just got a sense during the first half that we were going to get some breakout big plays, and they just didn't come. Well, they haven't come because this game that right now has got no rhythm. Timeouts, penalties, unsportsmanlike conduct, and then when you've had opportunity to score, in the case of Tuskegee, they haven't done it. And that goes back to what Rick Comagee's told me earlier in the week, that we haven't gone after you. We haven't been biting people. Morehouse defense has done a great job. Offense can't get anything going, but they've had bad field positions, so certainly you hope that both teams can put their A games together in the second half. Yeah, Tuskegee's got the lead 7-0 in this game, and not only are they leading in the scoring, they're also winning the battle of field position. They just had Morehouse College bottled up the entire first half. Well, a great job by Travis Coombs of punting the football, putting them in bad field position. And then again, the Morehouse offense's inability to make the big plays. We haven't talked much about John David Washington's round game or Travis Zachary for that mark. And then also their big play guy and Kenneth Rogers, I think maybe one, two catches for limited yardage. So the Morehouse offense has got to get cranking. And what that's going to do is challenge the Tuskegee defense. So again, field position, as we always say, it doesn't really change. Field position, special teams, whichever team play get, and who can make a break. Right now, the break has gone Tuskegee uh, way. And speaking of the Tuskegee defense, check this out. Last week, they gave up 490 total yards to Albany State. Tonight, or this afternoon, rather, here in Columbus, they've just done a terrific job against Morehouse. Yeah, they really have. And again, the field position, they, they brought five, six, seven guys in the box, and they almost dared Morehouse to throw the football. Morehouse... We are set to begin the second half. Morehouse College received the opening kickoff. Dave, if you if you look real quick now, they're kicking off from the 25-yard line. And, and you know, we, we, we ended up talking to a few more people than we thought we were at halftime. And halftime went over. It's allotted 20 minutes. Penalty was excessed. Obviously against Morehouse, so they're going to kick this ball from the 25. So we even start the second half with Finley, and this should give Tuskegee good field position. An unfortunate break for Morehouse. So the kickoff will come from the 25-yard line, and it'll be Byron Archibald kicking off. And Jeffrey Stanton is a dangerous kickoff returner. He handles the punt returning chores, too. Seven nothing, Tuskegee has the lead over Morehouse College. Archibald into the football and the third quarter is underway and it's gonna go out of bounds. Now Stan, we had a situation a couple of weeks ago where 
the receiving team of, of this situation opted not to take the ball <laughs> to the 35, but opted for the other team to re-kick. And since that kick came from the 25-yard line, that would move them back again. Yeah. But it looks, what, what's the situation going to be Well, they're going to take the ball, at, like you said, at, they're giving them the option right now. Tuskegee ran off the field thinking that they were going to just have that like it was, and they're going to take the option and give it, read it to them. Actually, right now, if I'm Tuskegee, I'd probably take the football. I, I don't, I'd I don't kick it again. Them. Well, I'd make them I'll kick tell it you again. Why, I'll tell you why I don't have them kick it again if I'm Tuskegee. It's because they do have a good kick game, and you never know if the kicker, Archibald, gets a hole in one. He kicks it deep, and you lose some yard. They may actually have them kick it over, but again, right now, this game looks like, and we hope it's more points, but it looks like it's going to be a game of field position. They'll decline this. They're declining the penalty, and they're going to take the ball at the 45-yard line. First and ten for Tuskegee. They've got the football at their own 45 as we begin the, the third quarter of play. And it's Cortland Florence on the carry. And Florence has got five games where he's picked up over 100 yards. He comes in. That was his seventh carry of the game. He had 30 yards at the half. So, again, they got to get him going. You can see Hazel had an outstanding first half, 65 yards. And there you see their season totals. Florence averaging over 116 ground yards a game. And as we mentioned, Tuskegee's had a 100-yard rusher in 20 of the last 22 games. Play action. Here's Jones. Jones firing. The pass is tipped and incomplete. Samuel Brown was trying to come back hard to the football. A junior from Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale could not hold it. Nice little turn in route. There's a play fake freezes. Great job of protection by Tuskegee. Puts the ball, a little, minute, little mustard on it extra. Ball kind of sails on him just at the end. But Brown, one of those four receivers that we talked about earlier from Tuskegee with over 15 receptions in the game. A little high, couldn't quite hold on to that. Third down and nine from the 45. Here's Jones. Jones pass is incomplete. It was intended for Kimball. And so for Morehouse, after seeing Tuskegee take the ball at their own 45-yard line to start the opening drive of the second half, the Morehouse defense holds. It's three and out for Tuskegee. They're well, going to have to punt. Tuskegee didn't get anything on first down. So that puts them in a long yardage situation. You have a pass that's incomplete and one that goes through Kylan Kimball. Surprised he didn't make that play. Just went right through his hands. And now we get to that field position battle. So a good punt by Travis Gooms should put Tuskegee in great defensive position. Bad snap. Ball is blocked and recovered by Morehouse. And Morehouse is going to take this one in for the tying touchdown. Touchdown, Morehouse. Joe Von Bowden, sophomore from Detroit, has scored. And Morehouse is an extra point away from tying the game at seven. Both touchdowns this afternoon to this point are a direct result of bad special teams. Well, I, I talked about it at the beginning of the game, getting a kick out of things. I was talking about those teams. Low snap, no chance for Gooms. That ball is blocked by two or three guys. Maybe his own teammate gets in there and blocks his personal protector. Just great pressure. You see that time by Morehouse. John Grant, also Corey Harden, and the kick is good, and we got a tie ball game. Extra point up and good by Byron Archibald. Just like that, we are tied at seven early in the third between Tuskegee and Morehouse. Rick Kamaji has played a terrific game to this point. He's coached a terrific game, but a blocked punt just moments ago on the first possession of the second half for Tuskegee resulted in a Morehouse touchdown. Joe Von Bowden returned it for a score, and we're tied at seven. So we'll start over now, and here's the kick by Archibald. It's short. And this one is going to be picked up. That's a live football picked up and diving out of bounds at the 28-yard line is the return man. And 
You know, I think that was a good play to go ahead and try to pick up that ball and go with it. James Lewis made the made the play. Well, Rather to. than wait to see if it was going to roll out of bounds, you exactly. got to get the ball. Exactly. You've got it. That's a live ball, like you said. You don't want to play around with it. Get the ball, get possession. Now, now again, this is a chance now for the Morehouse defense to kind of tee off a little bit. They've been faced with defending their goal the entire football game. Now they've got Tuskegee <coughs> deep in their own territory. Let's see if the turn, the worm will turn now. Morehouse faking the rush, and they are coming from the linebacking spot. The pass is incomplete. Jones' pass was incomplete, intended for Samuel Brown. And the coverage for Morehouse was provided by Corey Harden, the free safety, the sophomore from Macon. Corey Harden does a great job of coverage. But now you've got to kind of wonder what's playing in the Tuskegee players' minds a little bit, Dave. First down a moment ago in great field position. They went inside, picked up a yard. Results eventually in the punt being blocked on fourth down. This time, first down inside their own 25. They go with the long out route incomplete, second down and long. This is Jones. Protection is good. The pass is caught. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's a gain of seven. And the reception is made by James Lewis. You like that to get James Lewis outside. You double cup and Kimball to one side of the field. You can lose the inside receiver this time. James Lewis comes in with 16 receptions. Looks off one guy. Doesn't have his first guy. Goes to the second guy. That's Lewis. Lewis does a great job of running routes concentrating catch the ball and then goes out of bounds now you you got a workable situation third down and about four Tuskegee was unable to convert on their first third down attempt of the second half this time however they do convert it it's a completed pass up to the 40 yard line and that will move the sticks the pass was completed to Kenneth Horton so the Savannah State transfer finds a soft spot in the zone and gets the football. Again, you, you said it right on the head right there in the soft area zone between those defensive backs and linebackers. You just find your hook zones, come in there, stop, pop, catch the pass. Good job. Four of the games that Tuskegee's had, they've had leads at some point in the game, lost the leads and come back. That's what Rick Comagies was talking about, giving up big plays, finding the way to bottom. Let's see what they're going to do in this possession. Here comes Florence. He took the handoff out of the shotgun formation and takes it up to the 47-yard line. That's a gain of seven. You understand one point uh, about how this series is working. Last year, it was a 14-3 win by Morehouse. They returned a missed field goal for a touchdown. They returned a punt, a block punt for a touchdown today. Missed field goal and also a great reception that kept a drive going by Rodgers and ended up getting Zachary to score that touchdown. You saw Florence. He's got ability. They can't let him turn the corner. They don't that time. But again, he still picked up seven, eight yards. This time, Jones will go under center on second down and two. And the handoff goes to Florence. And Florence does a great job. The play was designed to go up the middle behind the, the left side of the line. He bounced it back to the right. Got the first down and a little more into Morehouse territory down to the 46-yard line. A gain of six. What I like about Florence, and you just saw it on that run, he's got great footwork and vision. He's always leaning forward, trying to get that extra yard. It's been very easy for some running backs just to fall down. Kept his balance and took it all. Picked up an extra two or three yards because of that. You just saw it, a good shot of a great man, a good winner, a good football coach, Rick Comagy. First down and ten. Jones again with all kinds of time to throw the football. Now begins to break down, and the pass was incomplete. Intended for Kenneth Horton. It's second down and 10. Boy, great defensive coverage in the secondary by Morehouse. As Jones had all kinds of time to throw the football and just couldn't find anybody. Well, on the, on the weak side of the field, Juwan Jones did a great job of trying to keep Samuel Brown. They were looking for Brown on the left side, and Jones did a good job taking him out of the route. They doubled him up on the other way. And again, you had to run, run, run. Great coverage by the defensive backs of Morehouse. Again, second down long situation. Did he look for Kimball? Did he try to get uh, uh, Florence in the offense? Flag is down, and the pass is incomplete. Looked like it was going to be a flank or screen intended for Kimball but Santino Hall blew it up <laughs> and Hall just said look I'm gonna give you a little calling card right there just to let you know I'm still around <laughs> offsides is the call 
against Morehouse. So it'll be second down and five. They'll replay the down. Santino Hall, kind of an interesting story. A junior from Palm Beach. He's a transfer from Texas Southern. He's the former SWAC freshman of the year. He once had three interceptions in one game against Jackson State in a Texas Southern 1915 win. Willard Sism says he's one of his favorite players, although he'd never tell him that. <laughs> Hand off in the backfield to Florence, and there's just nowhere to go. It's big Reuben Morris from Irondale, Alabama, right there to make the stop. Wow, no room at the end. You think you got something on the third and five, and look at Reuben Morris in the backfield. Almost a moment, Florence got the football. Wow, that's a good play. So after that, Offside penalty made it second down and five. It's now third down and a long six. Tuskegee will go from the gun. Four wide receivers, dual receivers to both sides. The throw wide open and unable to hold on to the ball was Kimball. He had a short touchdown if the pass had been on the mark, but Jones was leveled as he delivered that football. He took a big lick, and it goes as a, a loud but incomplete pass. Watch this. Now, you got to stand there as your quarterback, and John Grant makes him pay. Great pass, great strong arm, and Kimball just outside him. Watch this. Almost gets it. Almost got it right there. Lays out and just can't quite hold on. That would have been a big play for Tuskegee. And they're talking to Jones right now on the sideline. Well, they asked him what day, what state, yeah, what really. time, where. Got to have a good snap. And we have whistles. And I, I think that's a procedure penalty that Tuskegee really doesn't have a problem yeah. uh, taking. Travis Gums is back out on the field to punt for the first time since his last effort was blocked in return for a touchdown. And Morehouse may decline this. Uh, may have uh, once again been a problem with the clock. Santino Hall is back at the 10 yard line to return this punt. Low snap again, but he got this one off, and this is going to be driven into the end zone. So that's a touchback. Morehouse College is going to have the football at their own 20-yard line. We're all tied up at 7, Tuskegee and Morehouse in the 67th Classic between these two great schools. Go, see us go. I, I know. There's a lot of Tigers in the South. You got Jackson yeah. State and Tennessee State and Grambling, but that's the that's the Golden Tiger of Tuskegee. Tuskegee. Okay. And then the Maroon Tiger of Morehouse. I haven't seen him right. We got a lot of animals. Got a lot of here. stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Pass is caught. And up to the 29 yard line on the reception goes Eaton Hood. Sophomore from Atlanta, Eston Hood, rather. Eston was our starting fullback today for Morehouse College. Tuskegee led this game 7-0 for the majority of the first half. But Morehouse College was able to block a Tuskegee punt on the first possession of the third quarter. And Joe Von Bowden returned it for a touchdown. And that's where we stand right now. And that is a Morehouse first down as Nathaniel Zachary goes shooting through. The senior from Orlando moves the change. A lot of pride always on the line when these two teams meet. But, Stan, this is a very important game as far as the SIAC standings are concerned. No question. I don't think the winner of the SIAC can have more than two losses. And, you, you know, you've still got to play, in this case of Tuskegee, they still got to play Fort Valley. I think they play them next week. So, you know, hey, something's got to give. Need this game. Lamb is able to thread the needle with the pass. Lamario Mack, the sophomore from Albany, Georgia, makes the reception. 
Boy, he was playing with fire. Looks out, look how close this is to a pick. The story on Lamario Mack, the sophomore, is that he catches the short routes. He can do, he does Ooh. a great job of running routes, did exactly what he had to do. Great possession. Watson's has got his feet in bounds. Great concentration, can give you those short yards plays. First down are very, very close to it for Morehouse. But again, you like Mack. Good possession receiver. You see that touchdown that he scored, that was the first touchdown of the year for Morehouse after they were shut out on the road at Fort Valley State. He caught a 14-yard touchdown pass in the final minute of the first half against North Carolina Central, a game they won 19-14. Got a timeout on the field. We'll step aside. Tuskegee and Morehouse College tied at seven early in the third quarter from Columbus, Georgia. I mean, the game's been more exciting than that. Tuskegee and Morehouse, not a lot of points, but we're tied at 7, 9.39 to go in the third. <laughs> NBC Network has launched a dynamic new season of sports, entertainment, drama, movies, and music. Check out all of the network's new programming at NBCNetwork.com. That pass is caught by Kenneth Rogers, and he is knocked out of bounds, but not before he reaches the Tuskegee 34-yard line. It's a Morehouse College first down. She'll wake up on that play, I bet you that. Wake her up. <laughs> Nice little play fake right there. Reverse the action. Got a lot of time. Lamb does a great job finding my man, Kenneth Rogers, coming across the middle. He knows exactly what to do with it when he catches the ball. Well, she was probably laying there saying, wake me up when Kenneth Rogers gets in the open field. Well, there he is. <laughs> First and 10 for Morehouse at the 34. The Maroon Tigers are on the march. Dressed in their maroon uniforms, trimmed in white this afternoon. The Golden Eagles of Tuskegee are in the white. Trimmed in gold. Lamb giving up ground. Finally throws this one away. And that was a smart play by a senior quarterback. He was a three-year starter at Texas Southern before he landed on the scene in Atlanta at Morehouse College. Well, Lamb wanted to go to the right side of the field where, where Xanders and, and Mack were and slot and wide out. Thomas took that away from him. And again, what you said, very smart not to panic. Tried to find some time, find some time. Great job defensively by the DBs with Tuskegee. And then the smart play by Lamb. Just throw the football out of bounds. Live to play second down. Boy, when Lamb moves on, they really are excited about their backup quarterback at Morehouse. Dewan Burton, a freshman from Charlotte. And there goes John David Washington spinning his way inside the 30-yard line down to the 28. I'll check that. That was uh, Zachary on the carry. So Zachary remains in the game at the tailback spot. And he's giving him a lift. Yeah, well, he, he's a veteran uh, running back. I mean, like I said, over 750 yards last season rushing, close to being the all-time leading rusher for Morehouse. I mean, so he's a guy that, like I said, slowed by injuries early. John David came in, did his thing, and now Zachary's getting an opportunity to play and, and taking full advantage of it. This is the most productive drive of the afternoon for Morehouse College. It started at their own 20-yard line and they've advanced to the Tuskegee 29. This is Lamb, and he looks to run it. He puts his head down and burrows his way down near the 25. And, and you feel also the momentum of this football game kind of swinging. Morehouse stayed in it, stayed in it. Tuskegee had some opportunities in the first half, didn't take advantage of it. Again, Lamb being smart, doesn't find receivers open, so he tucks it, takes a little licking right there at the end of the play uh, by Andre Benz, but again, very close to a first down. <laughs> yeah, Benz made him earn that, that's for sure. All right, it's fourth down now. Fourth down and three. And Archibald is in to attempt a field goal. This will be officially a 42-yarder. Right at his limit. It's a fake. It's a pooch kick. They're going to punt out of that formation, and it's oh. going to go into the end zone. Nearly worked perfectly. They lined up for a field goal. Would have been a 42-yard attempt. Archibald, who also punts, delivered a little pooch kick that dropped down at the five-yard line but went into the end zone. I like that. You can see there, everybody there, just get it to him. Just a nice little kick, boom. But again, you've got to have your outside guys coming down and covered, and they don't do a good job converging the ball. One bounce, oh, almost got that. Could have been a big play, but just a little bit slow, couldn't get that. So the best drive of the day offensively for Morehouse College results in no points. And Tuskegee will take over following the touchback at their own 20-yard line. We're tied at seven.
Sideline violation. Sideline violation. That's well, you don't see that often. Well, no, we saw it in the uh, g in the game last week. You yeah, know, but you it, don't see it very often. often. Well, we saw it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that's a little often and rare. <laughs> but you remember last week, the guy hit the guy, gave him a little forearm right. shiver out of bounds. This week, see, they got a get back coach. Yeah. And the get back coach, that's his job. He tells everybody get back. That was they a, didn't get back. But you know what? That was just a warning. Well, like, he, he took it away. Okay, yeah. if you have to give him warning, is that? See, I told you it was rare. Yeah, but still, though, you, you <laughs> get back, coach. It, it really, that's the job. Tell them, get back, get back. Dave, hang with me. You be, I'm with you. I'm just saying it's rare. <laughs> and that wasn't even a that wasn't even a call. That was just a warning. But he was thinking about it, and he threw a flag. He on was it thinking as well. about that. Okay, that, I guess that was a a warning flag to tell you to get back. Now I bet you they're back. Look, look, take a shot. They're back. They're back. Oh, they're the back now. They're between the 30s. That was Lawrence Irvin with his first carry of the day. Again, they stay on the ground and up near the 28 yard line they go. Again, it's Irvin. Boy, we've seen some uh, new players in the game for Tuskegee. They had some new starters in the offensive line. Charles Mosby, Tavoris Williams, and Wayne Lomax were inserted into the starting lineup today. We've seen two quarterbacks today for Tuskegee. Handoff in the defense for Morehouse is there. Very conservative call by Tuskegee on that drive. The Morehouse defense came up big. And Garrick Witt is telling everybody about it down there. A power set formation right there. You take on the lead blocker. That's such a good job just taking him in. There's nowhere for Irvin to go. Great pursuit. Five, six, seven guys around the football for Morehouse. Bam! Corey Harden in there leading that first play. And you like, if you're a Morehouse fan, you got to like what you're seeing on the defensive side of the football. And Lawrence Irvin seeing some of his first significant action of the year on that series. I think you put pressure if you're Morehouse on this snap and also the punt. Good coming snap. after. Gums gets this one away. Not a long kick, an end over end kick that will go at the 35 yard line. And Santino Hall really had nowhere to go. Tried to give a little bit of ground and it'll go as a negative three yards on the punt return. The tackle on special teams was made by Ricky Reed, senior free safety from Warner Robins, Georgia, Northside High School. So Morehouse College has the football back offensively, and they had a good drive the last time they had the football that ended in a fake field goal attempt and no points. Good drive so far by Morehouse. They haven't had the ball a lot, but again, they've already equal the amount of yards than they had in the entire first half. Again, part of that was finding Rodgers, a couple of plays by Zachary. I think they're going to open this offense up a little more. And a little speed option that time for Lamb, and Lamb's got good running room up to the 39-yard line. So see, that's a good call on first down because Lamb gets outside and able to turn the corner. But also what they'll do, man, that's going to loosen up those DBs. So they're going to come up a little bit Think about taking that away. They don't take away the pitch. They do. He keeps the football. He doesn't. He keeps. He pitches it. So that time they took away the pitch, man. Lamb keeps the ball. Picks up about five yards. Well, Willard Sism was true to his word when he said that they had a multiple offense that they would run everything from an empty backfield to three tight ends and a full house look. That time a little speed option, and now we've got some running room. Morehouse is able to break a, a carry up the middle for a first down. Eston Hood off the belly option right there. Hit the first man. Great block to free up Eston Hood. And again, you talked about the versatility a moment ago. It was a true option. That time you just give it bam and let him go. And just, you know, you do things you take, take what you can. Carlton Rainer with a big block to open up that hole for Hood. Frank Walker made the made the stop defensively for Tuskegee. They were going speed option the other way. Lamb the keeper broke a tackle, has the first down up at the 38 yard line. Great job again blowing off the ball by Morehouse. Now they've got those DPs and linebackers inside the box. Don't be surprised if they take away the option stuff to go deep, right? That's that's Pickley. It's Pickley. Quarterback 
option keeper. That's all that is. He's going to look like he's going to pitch it, but he's going to keep that football. Freddie Jones is the offensive coordinator for Morehouse College, and he's really throwing some uh, things into this series against that Tuskegee defense. Rodgers at the top of your screen, closest to the boundary. And now we have flags down. And that is going to be a delay penalty. It's going to back up Morehouse five yards to the 41. You see Willard says and Freddie Jones. Those guys have got to be very frustrated by that. Your team's got some rhythm there. The offense is clicking, and then you get pushed back five yards with delay a game. You know, not only is the quarterback, Adam Lamb, a transfer from Texas Southern, but he brought his quarterback's coach, Jared Harper, from Texas Southern as well. They've got a real comfort zone when it comes to the offensive uh, look here at Morehouse College. Smart. And the running back's coach for Willard Sism is his nephew, Kenneth Sism. Here's Lamb. And Lamb is going to throw that one away. And we've seen him do that three times today. Rather than to try to force the ball or take a sack, he just simply throws it out of bounds, and he'll come back and fight on the next play. Sin Hood deep. Hook route was for Rodgers that time. They took both of those away. They were influenced to the right side of the field. Hood does a smart thing. I mean, Lamb does a smart thing. Doesn't have a play. Throw the ball out of bounds. Yeah, we mentioned earlier uh, about the great bloodlines for Sism. He's a former offensive tackle for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Played for Bear Bryant. He was a grad assistant for Gene Stallings. And uh, he's related. His cousin is Howard Cross, longtime tight end of the New York Giants in the NFL. Uncle was a coach, Coach Sism at Tuskegee yeah. back in the 70s. And again, more whistles. This has been a bit of a cursed drive once uh, Morehouse College was able to get into Tuskegee territory. This is going to go against the Maroon Tigers. Every time that either team today has had an opportunity to get a drive, penalties, a missed handoff, an incompletion, a couple of bad plays have set them back. Again, this, this has got to be very frustrating if it's for more outs because they were driving, as you said. Offsides, delay a game. Those are penalty kills. Those, those, those are drive bursts. You know, you just don't get that. You're not going to win ball games that way. Game is tied at seven. It's now second down and 20 for Morehouse as they operate from the Tuskegee 47. Lamb on the rollout. One pump fake. Now he's going to send this one long in the direction of Rogers. A flag is down. We may be looking at an interference or a holding penalty against the Tuskegee secondary. Barry Anderson is our referee today. We've seen plenty of penalties here in the third quarter. And that penalty is going to go against Tuskegee's Golden Tigers. Interference is the call. And that's an automatic first down. And man, that's a killer for Tuskegee because Morehouse was looking at second and 20. Oh, man. I mean, you hate to see that little stop and go route. They were trying to send Rodgers on the stop, made the fake, and then send him deep. And actually, I think it's probably more of a, a defensive hold than it was a pass interference because the flag was actually thrown before the ball was in the air. Nevertheless, automatic first down keeps that drive. Like you said, keeps the drive going for Morehouse. Next week, Tuskegee will visit Fort Valley State, the leader in the SIAC, so that gives you an, indi uh, an indication of how strongly they need this game. They'd love to go into that Fort Valley State game knowing that if they could win it, they'd be in a first-place tie in this conference. Yeah, then, then they've got uh, homecoming, and then they go to Kentucky State, and I think they ended up in the Turkey Day Classic. And uh, my man James Arrington, the, the Tuskegee tickets guy, been telling me, Stan, you got to come to homecoming against Lane in November, November 2nd. Mr. Arrington, I can't make it. I got a game to go to. <laughs> but he was telling me, you got to come homecoming at Tuskegee. It's a happening event. So, you know, November 2nd, remember that. Homecoming at Tuskegee. On first down, the carry by Hood takes him down to the 30-yard line. Well, it's interesting you say that because next week, Lane College comes to Atlanta to take on Morehouse, and that is Morehouse's homecoming. Well, you know, we talked to the coaches last week about that. Yeah, about being the homecoming opponent. They were Kentucky State, and they're going to be, you know, Morehouse and Tuskegee. But you don't want to play Lane. Eh? No. Last week, Kentucky State learned the hard way. I think you need to leave the Lane Dragons alone for homecoming. But they're going to come to Tuskegee on November 2nd. So uh, that, was old, that was the old. Old lane, the old lane, not the new lane. lane. Yeah. Here's Lamb. Pop 
cut through into the secondary down to the 15 yard line. So Morehouse now in the red zone and threatening to take the lead for the first time today. We talked about it a few moments ago that they felt like the momentum had swung after the block punt to Morehouse. Lamb on the keeper, the option. Doesn't get, didn't miss his tackle right there. And boom, you got to make plays if you're Tuskegee. Morehouse is more aggressive right now. Good job by Morehouse. The Maroon Tigers, a Morehouse man. Morehouse is in the red zone for the first time today. There's the rushing yards. You can see Morehouse has nearly doubled their output from the first half. And most of that's been Lamb. Yeah, and we're still here in the third quarter. All right, here's Lamb on the play action. Going to the end zone. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, Morehouse College. It's the big guy, Hunter, the tight end. Ernest Hunter on the receiving end of a 15-yard touchdown, and Morehouse has scored offensively for the first time today, and they've got a 13-7 lead, and a point after is pending. Great play fake, and Hunter, he did get behind the linebacker. Hunter, a 15-yard touchdown. Here's Archibald on to add the extra point. He shoots it through. So Morehouse has the lead for the first time today, 14-7. to You know, we've seen Ernest Hunter play on both sides of the line today. Now, great play fake. You'll see this. Now, watch at the top of the screen. Hunter going right off the line of scrimmage. Nobody checked him. Nobody pushed him. He is wide open. Dave, you could have caught that pass. You know, big fella, first touchdown of the season. They already got here. Watch this. Play fake a lot of time. Good job, offensive line. Nice lies pass. Lays out all six feet, two inches, 255 pounds. The big fella going both ways. Morehouse, touchdown. I don't know if I'd have caught that ball. I probably would have pulled over at the five-yard line <laughs> for would, gas. The, but You would die from the run. Right. Yeah. Would, well, how about that? So, you know, you're looking at a Tuskegee football team that over the last three years has won 28 of 30 games. They lost last week to Albany State. They lost last year to Morehouse. And that game last year won by Morehouse snapped a 16-game home winning streak. You know, I, I see as, as I watch this game, and this is a packed house. I mean, you know, the people here in Columbus, Georgia, done a great job of, of getting fans here. And Tuskegee brought a lot of people down from Birmingham. Their, their alumni associations packing food and everything. They can't be happy right now because the Morehouse team is feeding on the enthusiasm right now. The momentum is swung. They're excited. The Tuskegee guys have been hitting the mouth. Very important drive right now. How are they going to respond? Because as we've said a couple of times, they've had leads in ball games against Lincoln, against Winston, against Miles, where they just didn't put teams away. They had chances early to put Morehouse, at least put them behind the eight ball, get up 14 nothing, 10 nothing. They didn't do it. Morehouse has come out a good second half of special teams play, a very good drive. They've got the lead, and they've got the swagger now. Archibald set to kick off for Morehouse. And there's the kick. And this one is sailing out of bounds. So Tuskegee will take it at the 35-yard line, we assume. Remember, their opening drive of the third quarter began at the 45-yard line. And they will take the ball at the 35. You know, just one more point about the impact of that game last year when Morehouse beat Tuskegee 14-3. Well, how about that? They are going to re-kick. Yeah. Here's a scoring drive. Seven plays, 67 yards in 349. Ernest Hunter, a 15-yard touchdown catch. The third TD grab of his career. Since 1990, Tuskegee's won seven out of the last 12 ball games. Like I said, they had a win streak going. And, and, and just a great effort by Morehouse. And what they did, they took away last year everything Tuskegee liked to do. I mean, Wilson had a nice game running the football, but they weren't able to break big plays. They made deflections on the defense on passes. Again, that block kick set the momentum there. And, and as this game has gone on, you're watching Morehouse get more and more confident. And they've done this without Zachary, without Washington having a big game, and really without Rodgers, their primary receiver, having a, a tremendous 100-yard-plus yeah, receiving He's been game. bottled up. His biggest play was uh, uh, an interference call against him 
Yeah, uh, that, and then the little slant route he had earlier, early in the game. But I mean, he really, you know, they really haven't put together big plays, but they had the nice drive just then to get them to lead. Yeah, he hasn't had the impact as he's had recently, where he had five touchdowns in the last two games combined. All right, short kick. And this is really not going to work out. Tuskegee had the option to take the ball at the 35-yard line. On the squib kick, they're only able to return it to the 34. And now another flag is down. They actually may actually re-kick this again, Dave. This may be an, another. This could be an offside penalty. That is the case. It's offsides. So they could have had it at 35. They didn't get it. They had it at the 30 that time. Let's let's take, make a note of this this time when the possession change and see what happens. And again, this is a time where you like that because now the offense, the, the kicking team has run down the field twice. They sprint it, boom, sprint again, boom. And now and, and Archibald doesn't seem very confident. He's trying to kick away, and those kicks have gone bad. Look like golf shots are yours. Now, wait a minute. You know, the other point, and, and I, I'm just going to totally bypass that personal attack. But I was, I was an attack. That's the truth. <laughs> well, that's the true statement. <laughs> the one thing it's really kind of done is it's killed a little bit of Morehouse's momentum exactly. following the exactly. touchdown. And, and we all know that football is a game of emotion. And if you're, if you're Morehouse, you want to kick the ball. If you kick it away, you want to come down and make a big play, get a big hit, give everybody something to be excited about. Tuskegee's got to take full advantage of this kickoff. So Archibald now will kick off the ball from the 25. Byron Archibald kick, and this one apparently will stay in bounds and will be fielded at the 16-yard line. And the return man breaks one tackle and is still on his feet and takes the football all the way down to the 37-yard line. And what a terrific return that was by Christopher Bates, the senior from Detroit. Again, you make them pay with a mistake. You kick the ball deep, keep it away from Kimball. Bates, who's also a dangerous wide receiver, had the touchdown early in the game, breaks a couple of tackles, and watch who makes the play. Archibald said, boom, get out of the way. Move, get out of the way. And then he keeps going. Bates picks up a couple extra yards. But you like to see that the kicker getting in the way. You know, he'll, he'll say, coach, did you see that? He'll want that replayed on the tape now. Well, that was the fourth consecutive kickoff attempt with a penalty. This was a holding call on the return against Tuskegee. So these final three minutes of the third <laughs> quarter uh, are in the twilight zone of college football. Tuskegee had come into this ball game. 59 penalties throughout the season and again not a team that you really think has been penalized but surprisingly this season they were like number seven in the conference in penalties and so middle mistakes right now really hurt Rick Comagee's bunch. Well after all that it looks like Tuskegee will finally start this drive at the 30-yard line. They could have had it at the 35 about five minutes ago. We but told them no. that. We told them that. <laughs> well, Bates with a 48-yard kickoff return, but that will go for nine. There's the pass, and it's caught up the 35-yard line. Five-yard gain. The reception made by Kenneth Horton. And Santino Hall, man, is having a good football game. Not letting people behind him. Came in and closed cover very, very quickly to make the hit. I'm sorry, Kimball made the reception. And it was Santino Hall who made the stop for Morehouse College. Kimball with the reception, Hall with the stop. Second down and five. Now, what you could be setting Hall up for is a little hitch and go. Get him in, fake boom, and then throw over the top. But that's a great cover corner right there by Hall. Right now, Cortland Florence is the tailback for Tuskegee as they face second and five. Three-step drop, a little pump and go action. And incomplete. And now flag comes in in the secondary, and this is going to go as interference are holding against Morehouse. Late call, but again, what we just said on the play before, the little pump and go, hook and go, they took that away and then continued the route, and they're going to get a pass interference call, I think. And it's going to be on Keith Howell, but again, he just bumped the receiver as he was going out of the route. Actually, he was trying to get out of the way. Wave it off! Wave it off! Wave it off! Wave it off! 
That pass interference is the call, and I think you could hear from our field mics that the Morehouse College coaches wanted them to wave that play off, claiming that that was an uncatchable ball. But the reason he couldn't catch it, yeah, here's the reason watch why. This, watch it right there. They see there's the bump. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, he pushed him off right at the end of the broke his plane. Good call that time by uh, the pass interference against Corey Harden. That was a good call. So here we are again, ready for football after five penalties have been called on the last six plays. First and ten for midfield. Here comes Florence, trying to get wide, and he can't do it. Defensed well by Morehouse, a gain of only a yard. The Morehouse defense was ready as Florence, who's really found some success trying to go to the right today, just couldn't find any kind of opening that time as Morehouse stretched the play out well. Well, you ask your DBs, your corners, and your defensive ends stretch the play out, especially when you're running the short side of the field. They did a great job of stringing him out. And Lawrence, I mean, Florence went a long way to only pick up a yard and a half. Second and nine. Here's Jones with a quick pass. And that is a catch up at the 46-yard line. Samuel Brown. So Brown's in the books with his second catch of the day. They're going to be able to get the underneath passes a little short. If they're patient and want to take that, they can get that most of the football game. But what they're not going to be able to do is take things deep. They're dropping guys in too deep coverage so far. It's really hard. And plus, also, that, that Morehouse is doing a great job of putting pressure on quarterback Jones. Right? Jones is really having to look for second and third receivers. Tuskegee behind for the first time today on the march. This is third down. Little swing pass for Florence out of the backfield. A flag is down, and he is out of bounds at the 40-yard line, very close to the first down marker. But we'll have to check the penalty. And where this penalty came from out of the secondary, it, it could be against Tuskegee. And it will be against Tuskegee. So you got the pass to Florence, and you can see right there, Kenneth Hort, you can see the jersey coming out. There was a hole. Good look at Rick Tomagy. They, they've won a Black College National Championship. They've won three SIAC titles over the last couple of years. The guy that they just keep winning, he's a class act, doing it on the field, doing it in the classroom. But I know he's very, very disappointed right now because he said, he said our guys are gonna, our guys are gonna play today. They're gonna come and bring it. And we even talked to him in the pregame, and he had his game face on oh, early he did. when he got off the bus. And I, I thought it was gonna hit me. I was kind of scared. <laughs> but you know, right now these guys are just not performing the way he'd like to see him play. Four wide receivers trips to the right on third and ten and nowhere to go the ball is out and a flag is down as the reception is made by one of the offensive linemen Desmond Scantling had Jones collected back at the 41 yard line and Jones was able to get that ball away and it was the catch was made by the center Robert Bailey and you can't do that you, you can't do that but Scantling just coming in on the blitz pressure pressure throws it up Ooh. my a hey, ball like, that, look at it might have been a fumble but nevertheless big fella says big fella says says hey look you know I want to carry the football I got a chance and everybody's hit me but and as I look at that I think his arm was going forward but again illegal pass that was third down, correct? That was third and ten. Oh, they, it was? It looked like it was a fumble. And we have come to the end of the third quarter. In this third quarter, Morehouse College got on the board. A blocked field, a blocked punt attempt was returned for a touchdown by Joe Von Bowden. And then Ernest Hunter was on the receiving end of this 15-yard touchdown pass. Morehouse with the lead, 14-7. 14 to 7.
There's the punt. Santino Hall for Morehouse College gets away from it, and it will roll inside the 20-yard line down to the 19. Boy, that looks good on the punter's stats, you know, when he gets that extra inside the 20. Boom. Breaking down the stats through three quarters are brought to you today by 1-800-CALL-ATT. And as you can see, the battle has been joined by Morehouse College. They did not have nearly that many yards in the first half. They doubled their rushing total, in fact. And most of that rushing yard is on the legs of Adam Lamb. We have said Zachary. Haven't really called his name for big yards, nor Washington. Very important drive for, for Tuskegee on the defensive end. Tuskegee fans know 51 points. They've been a fourth quarter team all year. Their best quarter. They got to play D right now. Good looking play. The design on that play was outstanding as Lamb was able to get it to John David Washington, who's rejoined the battle and he makes the reception over his right shoulder and takes the football for a relatively short game like this call it's a safe call come in a little pressure they show option and then there's, uh, there's washington on a swing pass good hands able to get up they can't quite get those shoulders turned good pursuit by tuskegee francia thomas sophomore from camp springs maryland and bishop mcnamara high school made the tackle for tuskegee it's a gain of four second down and six out of the eye this time speed option for lamb lamb's had a lot of success on this play and now it's a race to the house lamb finally dragged down but not before he reaches the 10 yard line I guess you can update those rushing numbers. Brought to you by 1-800-CALL-ATT. Most successful play today has been option, speed option. You show it, you take everything away. You take the dive, you take the pitch man, Washington, you take him away. Lamb keeps the ball, quarterback keeper, and uses the speed. Only the game-saving tackle by Frank Walker stops the big play by Morehouse. Sixty-six yards for Lamb on the rush. Lamb now rushing unofficially 123 yards on the game. And here he goes again on the keeper, and this time it's defended well by Tuskegee. Roderick Washington, the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville and Scandalwood High, came up and made the stop. He had the quarterback responsibilities that time, and he dropped Lamb before he could get rolling. So Morehouse, which trailed most of the afternoon, they trailed Tuskegee 7-0 at the half. Now with the lead 14-7 and threatening to score. This is their second time into the red zone Hood this Washington afternoon. in the backfield. Rodgers in man. Here's Lamb. Backpedaling, throwing, pass is caught. The reception was made by Hood, but Hood will pick up maybe a yard. The tackle was made by Drayton Florence. It's a hard play to really develop that close to the end zone. Watch this. There's the play fake right there to Washington. Roll back, get away. And then all of a sudden, Lamb is backpedaling. Hood comes underneath. Great tackle by Florence. But again, that's a play that's slow to develop. It's got to happen quicker. And, and Hood's got to get up the field that time. That time he didn't do that. There's a good look at Ramon Nickerson, freshman defensive back from Phoenix City, Alabama. Got to get this off. And now a timeout is taken by Morehouse College. So this will be third down, third down and nine from the 11. We'll step aside momentarily, just over 12 minutes to go in regulation. Morehouse College threatening and leading Tuskegee 14-7. Tuskegee 7, 12.07 left to go in regulation, and that is our 1-800-CALL AT&T fan of the game. Each week we'll pick out a fan, and usually it's Stan's discretion, or producer, director Tom Lundy, and they made this choice, and that... Or it could be that. It could be both of them. Won't give it to. Yeah, let's because you got to call. If ATT, you got to call somebody. That's right. The point of having one on the end, you got to go, one's got to call the other one. So they're, they're both fans. Again. All right, new quarterback in the game. Dwan Burton is going to send it to the end zone where it's intercepted. Florence is going to stay in the end zone. Apparently, that is his fourth interception of the go year. Go to a knee. Go to a knee. He's going to bring it out. Why? We have no idea. Out to the seven-yard line. 
What? What? Well, we had think? we had all kinds of things happening there besides our fan of the game. Yeah, and we had a new quarterback. That dead had us all fouled up. But I mean, okay, the left-handed Burton from Charlotte got great potential. Throws the fade route, underthrows Rodgers. Then go to a knee. Go to a knee. What are you doing down there? Go to a knee. And he may have stepped out of bounds, but we can't see. But what are you doing? You yes, that is not uh, my play of the game. <laughs> and then instead of getting the ball in the twenty. Tuskegee starts the ball in their own five-yard line. Yeah. That's not smart. On first down, the pitch back to Matthew Hazel, and a flag is down. You know, I understand that you want to try to make plays sometimes. You know, and Drayton Florence, obviously, four interceptions this season. He's a tremendous defensive back, but you've got to be smart. And you're going to stand the concept. I talk about it so much in basketball, but it's the same thing in football. Understand the concept of time and score. Understand where you are in relation to the field. In the end zone, go to a knee. All right, offside is the call against Morehouse, and that'll get Tuskegee away from their own goal line. Kind of weird. Both teams have been in the red zone twice today, and both teams have produced a touchdown and thrown an interception. So Morehouse had a great opportunity there to, to did. pad their 14-7 lead. Instead, they put a new quarterback in the game who immediately throws an interception. Tuskegee's got the ball and can tie the game with a touchdown. Well, Burton had thrown 14 passes and completed eight of them and two of the touchdowns. Oh, what a big hit in the backfield. It's Garrick Witt with a huge hit on Matthew Hazel. Witt comes out of, out of his middle spot, comes down there and takes Hazel. We hadn't called Hazel's name much in the second half. We've seen Cortland Florence much of the second. They come back with Hazel. Big play now on third down. Actually, with that offside penalty, second we're now down. looking right. at second down, second down, and a long five. Play action, end around coming for Kylan Kimball. And Kimball is across the 20, up to the 21-yard line, and that's a first down. I was so shocked the moment ago from the Florence interception. I'm still reeling, but there's a reverse, a little trigger right there. Get the ball in Colin Kimball's hand. We haven't called his name a lot. He's one of the big play players for Tuskegee on their side of the ball. Get him the football and do it on the reverse. That's a big play for the Tuskegee offense. They started this drive following the interception at the seven yard line. Now they pick up a first down at their 21. Play action on first down by Jones. Lofts a soft pass, it is complete and it's up near another first down to Christopher Bates. There's the play fake, and you can see that the, all the impression goes inside. You can see that he bit on it, carried with bites, and because he leaves his opening, you can take Bates underneath. Bates makes that catch, and it's close to a first down. Yeah, Bates had a 48-yard kickoff return taken off the board because of a holding penalty, but that reception is going to stay up. Second in less than a yard. Here comes Hazel. He's got the first down. He's got more than that. Give him a gain of about six as he's tripped up at the 35-yard line. Lead play, you get out there and give him a block. Good job by Nicholson to open up a pass. And Hazel again doing a very good job carrying the football, getting the start today. Hazel now over 70 yards in his role as the starting tailback today. Hazel's had the majority of the carries. We've seen multiple carries, however, by Cortland Florence as well. But that offense has only produced one touchdown this afternoon for Tuskegee. They run it again. Morehouse had great penetration that time. And the stop was made by Scantling. Big Ernest Hunter inside there trying to make, make Scantling turn to the inside and just disrupt that play. Scantling's originally from Knoxville and he transferred into Morehouse College from Tennessee State. Tigers. No, that's right. Just that it wasn't a rule that he had to transfer to a school. Well, it makes it easier, though. You go Tiger to Tiger. Your, your gear's got all the same name on it. There's the pass. Caught in traffic. The reception was made by John, or check that, James Lewis. 
There were two receivers in the area. And Lewis stepped up and made the catch. Well, they sent Bates underneath. Lewis was on the long route. And again, Bates has kind of stopped on the play. Fortunately, he does. And the ball goes right to Lewis. Lewis comes, ooh, comes back inside catch around two guys from Morehouse. You know, you don't want to force plays right now. Plenty of time if you're Tuskegee. Over nine minutes to play. But you gotta have you got to have production out of this drive. Yeah, Lewis and Bates were both in the vicinity. There we go. First and ten. Here's the pitch. And a great cutback down to the Morehouse 37-yard line. And that's Lawrence Irwin. Irvin, Lawrence Irvin. I like this. This is a little toss play. And then if you're in zone blocking, you give the you runner just wherever you can pick a hole. He sees it, gets his shoulders upfield, and takes it away for a big game. And now the Morehouse offense is in gear. Lawrence Irvin with his first four carries of the year this afternoon. And you're wondering, where's Big John Grant, who leads this conference? Check that out, though. I'm sorry. Uh, Irvin's only had four carries this year for the Tuskegee offense, and there he goes again. That's carry number five. Take it down to the 35-yard line. It'll be second and seven. But we haven't talked hardly at all about John Grant. Well, they're running away from him. <laughs> That's the primary reason that you're not hearing his name called. Big number 50, all SIEC performer the last two seasons. 67 tackles coming into this ball game. You know, and, and again, you run away from it, and that's one reason why you sit on passes, play face. Try to freeze that middle linebacker, the inside guy, make him do something, react away from it. But I guarantee you, before this game is over, we'll hear John Grant's name called one more time. Grant's only got seven tackles today. He averages 14. That's second in all of Division II nationally. There's the pass. It's caught, and it is a first down. The reception by Brown. Brown's been a factor today in the offense. They describe Brown of, of these four wide receivers, probably one of the most dependable. He does, does a good job running short routes. He can also get deep. Great hands, great concentration. Again, finding your hook areas five, six, seven yards down the field, getting in front of DBs, catching the ball, then turning your shoulders, trying to take it upfield. Samuel Brown has one touchdown catch on the year, and it was an 18-yard scoring reception in the opener against Clark Atlanta. First and 10, now at the 20-yard line. Here comes Irvin again. And Irvin spins his way down near the 17-yard line. Tuskegee needs a touchdown to tie. They trail 14-7. Tuskegee is eighth ranked nationally in Division II this week. They're in second place in the SIAC Morehouse. behind Fort Valley State. Morehouse has played a very, very competitive schedule. You look at the teams they played, Fort Valley, Tusculum, Tusculum 5-1 also ranked. You know, Kentucky State, Benedict haven't struggled, but North Carolina Central, Bowie State teams in the CIAA, they're respectable. So they've, they've been pressed this season in their 4-2 record. There's Florence as Florence tries the right side. Not much there, and it's going to be third down and long. Try to get the ball to Florence and see what he can do. Just get around this. It looks like, hey, I don't know if he's if he's suffering for a leg injury, if he's had cramps. But that's about the third time today on carries where he's kind of come up short on plays. It's a big third down play. I got to believe now as we look at the clock, Moving in towards the six-minute mark that this is four-down territory for Tuskegee. They're trailing 14-7. Third down and eight. And a huge sack. And a face mask penalty is going to be pending against Alfonso Dunstan, the freshman from Watkinsville, Georgia. He had the quarterback, Jones, for a sack. But he grabbed the face. Watch pass. Dunstan come off the edge here. Nobody touches him. And just a ooh. And, ooh. and he got him around there. That's going to probably be a 15-yarder. But again, great play by Dunstan. And he brings that head back. That's a 15-yard penalty. Boy, that is going to be, could be one of the plays that could be a turning point in this game. He had the sack. But he grabbed the face mask, and on third and long, this is going to give Tuskegee an automatic oh, first man, down. But you can't time. fault the effort that time by the young Dunstan. <laughs> Dunstan started today at the right defensive end position for Morehouse College. Here comes the mark off. 
That is a first down. And the line of scrimmage is now the 15-yard line. <laughs> I tell you, you can see Jones. He is furious in the huddle. <laughs> he, he was giving it to his teammates there a minute ago. Hey, Tuskegee Pride coming out. They're not no, used to losing. They're not, and no mistakes right now. I'll tell you something else I do if I'm Tuskegee. I tell my band to kind of quiet down. I'm going toward that end zone. You don't want a penalty right now. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. Speed, option, the pitch. Not much running room that time for Matthew Hazel. Give him a couple yards. It's going to be second down and eight. You see that little spin right there. That's kind of the influence of defensive backs. Gives uh, Hazel just enough chance to get around. A nice tackle by Wembley in the open field. Oh, man, I had some room. Closing in on five minutes to go in regulation. 14-7. A touchdown ties this game for Tuskegee. Six and a half on the current drive. This is the 13th play of the drive. Option to the right this time. And as the ball went back to the ball carrier, Hazel, he slipped down for a big loss. And now it's going to be third down and a dozen. You want to take, you want to keep three to five yards between quarterback and the pitch man. That time, I think they were too wide. Good job by Morehouse of kind of pushing them out a little bit. And you see the feet go right from under Matt Hazel. And with about four minutes to play, Dave, I'll throw the question to you now. Should they be stopped? Do you go for it on fourth down? Or do you kick the field goal and hope your defense can give you the ball one more time? I say you have to go for it depending on the situation. They're only two of five on field goals this year. Here's third down and a dozen. Jones is going to tuck it. He's inside the 10. And he is slammed down as he reaches close to the six-yard line. So it's going to be fourth down, fourth down and a yard and a half. Again, good job by Tuskegee, giving him protection, giving him some time. You don't find anybody. DBs, everybody's got wide receivers covered. Tuck it, take it. There's one lick, and then get there and stretch it out. It's going to be very, very close to first down. The line of scrimmage is the seven. They need the five. And now Tuskegee's going to talk, take a timeout and talk this over. Timeout with 3.34 to go in the fourth quarter. Morehouse leads Tuskegee 14-7, but Tuskegee is driving and facing a key fourth down call. Full of big plays, we're facing another one. Morehouse leads Tuskegee 14-7, three and a half minutes to go in the game. Both teams with two timeouts left. Tuskegee is ready to go on fourth and two at the Morehouse seven. Here comes Cortland going wide into the end zone. Touchdown Tuskegee. They're an extra point away from tying this game. One of the leading scorers in the SIAC has scored one of his biggest touchdowns of the year. Toss sweep. They're watching the top of the screen. Great blocking by both wide receivers getting there. Might have been a little bit of a block in the back. Couldn't really tell right there. But a great run for the touchdown by Cortland Florence. Now the all-important extra point. Travis Gums is on to attempt it. Hazel is the holder. And now flags are down. Too many men on the field, maybe? Kicks have been an adventure this afternoon. Gums had a punt blocked in return for a Morehouse touchdown. It tied the game at the time at seven. And the penalty is going to go against Morehouse. Legal participation. And Gums is 20 of 20 on extra points this season. It looks like we're going to get a look at the swinging gate. A two-pointer would give Tuskegee the lead, but if they choose for the more conventional one-point kick, they'll tie the game at 14. 
play clock. Six seconds. Got to get it off. And they didn't. The play clock expired, so now the extra point's becoming a bit of an adventure. Too much trickeration right then, Dave. You, you know, line up, you're either going to kick it, or you're going to go for two, make the decision and do that. That cost them. I mean, I know it's half the distance to the goal, so the yardage that they had a moment ago, they just lost it back. But again, that, that's just, you, you got to get those plays off. Now, you mentioned it, Stan. We, we missed it. The players on the field for Tuskegee were signaling to the band to stop playing. Yeah. So the band has stopped playing, and that may have affected their play calling on that extra point attempt. Well, so right now, the Tuskegee band is silent. So Gums now set to kick. Right side block. It's a 23-yard kick to tie the game. And he's got it. Well, that point after was an adventure, but it was converted. He's 21 to 21 on the year. Number 20 ties the game at 14. 306 to go in the fourth quarter. Tuskegee, a seven-yard touchdown run by Cortland Florence and the point after, and we're all knotted up, and we could be looking down the barrel of overtime, but Morehouse has got an opportunity to score and win the game here, and who knows, we've still got plenty of time. Over three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, and that kick is going to sail into the end zone. Morehouse, which had a 14-7 lead, only time they led this afternoon, now tied at 14 with the ball at the 20-yard line. Great drive by Tuskegee. Nine rushing touchdowns all season by Tuskegee. Florence has them all. The overtime that they played early in the season against Benedict, 0-0 overtime. He scores a touchdown to win the game 7-0, so he has been in pay there at land when they need to. But again, good play, and you look at that key play right there, the face mask call. Justin came in untouched, has a big play. They get the face match, good call, and off we go. We got three and a half before we know about another overtime day. Wow, what a meat grinder of a drive. 821, covered 93 yards. Here's Lamb, who's been such a factor for Morehouse here in the second half. He's across the line of scrimmage and knocked out of bounds after a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And you know, and if you're Morehouse College, you also have to be cognizant of the fact that you don't want to commit a turnover down here. Yeah, you exactly That could cost right. you the game. You're exactly right, but I think both coaches will tell their players, be aggressive, play the game, play to win. Don't play afraid. When you're afraid, you'll make mistakes. With Lamb going out of bounds, the clock stops with 2.52 to go in the fourth quarter. And now the quarterback is limping out of the game. Lamb is forced to come out of the game with a limp after being knocked out of bounds. And so the freshman, Dewan Burton, 6'5", 230 pounds, freshman from Charlotte is in the game. Burton's already tossed an interception in this game. Now he's going to keep it. And and he's going to dive down to the 24-yard line. Morehouse, you got to get, you know, Lamb's got to get well in a hurry because I don't, I, you know, I like Burton. He's a young kid. He's got poise. He's going to be good. But they've had so much success with the option right now. Getting him out on corners, you need him in the game, especially at this time. Now we have a timeout called by Tuskegee. They stop the clock with 2.37 to go. Kind of a curious timeout by Tuskegee, don't you think? Well, they want to make certain that their defense is set right now. Big third down play, no mistakes. You know, what are you going to do? Especially now that the new quarterback, and he is a lefty, he can throw the football. Facing a big third down for Morehouse. And you take a look at that crowd here, over 20,000 here this ball game. Everybody excited. I mean, a lot of things are going on this weekend. Golf tournament, they had a parade. Tom Joyner's show yesterday. Uh, Uncle Delic's coming tonight. The Barcays, a lot of stuff. That alumni game. basketball alumni game. Ba yeah, they sure did on Wednesday. And a lot of things going on. Big party tonight where both schools get together and celebrate the 100th anniversary of Tuskegee and Morehouse playing. And the Columbus people have been great. You know, Colonel Jackson, the chairman, super guy. And, you know, they just, you know, I can't wait till next year. Last year was a close game. This year it's oh, going to be close. It's a better game. Yeah, so next year, hey. It's a better game. Last year, when these two teams played, it was 14-3. Nobody scored in the second half. 
We've had a lot of second half fireworks. All right, we're tied at 14. Third down now, third down and seven. Dewan Burton, the freshman quarterback from Charlotte, is in the game in relief for the injured Lamb. Safety, I don't think you go deep. You give some, some sure passes, something underneath. Look for Rodgers, look for Matt. They're going to throw it. Ball is loose on the ground. And I think Morehouse got it back. And that is going to go as a fumble. That was not an incomplete pass. Great pressure by Tuskegee's well, that's line. That's probably what they were talking about. If they go past and just putting pressure inside, the pocket breaks down. And then there was the big hit that time by number 98, Darius Thomas. And look with the pressure. They keep him inside the pocket right there. Pressure, pressure. Watch Thomas meet him. That's a fumble. It hits his shoulder pad. And somebody's got to get it. Morehouse for coverage. And now the momentum we talked about so long ago with, that was Morehouse. And it's moving to the Golden Tigers. Yes, it is. Tigers. Last time they had the football, they scored on a drive that took over eight minutes. Now the clock is running again, 221, 220. Archibald set to punt. Short kick. But it'll take a Morehouse bounce. And the line of scrimmage is going to be the 43-yard line. The return by Jeffrey Stanton was relatively short. The special teams tackle made by Davis Matthew from Miami. Keep this in mind in these final two and a half minutes, two minutes and seven to be exact. Travis Gums, two of five field goals. He's made the last two kicks he's attempted from 20 and 40 yards. That 40 yarder was his longest of the season, that being against Lincoln two weeks ago. So again, you've got to get him room. He had the leg, he had the potential to make a long field goal. First down and 10 for Tuskegee. Game tied at 14. This drive will begin with 2.07 on the clock. Jones straight back to pass. Looking long, has a man open, and he couldn't make the catch. Tried to get the football to Samuel Brown. Brown was juggling the football and could not make the grab. You see five guys out in the pattern. Three on the right, two in second. The inside receiver is Brown, and they go for it all. Nice pass. He should have caught this. Had to turn back, look at his son. It goes off, bounces off again, and you see it does touch turf. Incompletion. Nice call. Oh, that was very close for Tuskegee. You watch this ball at the end of the play. Bounce off and see it hit his shoulder pad right there. Boop, and then hits the ground. Got to say, down. that wasn't Brown. That was the first pass attended for, intended this afternoon for Brandon Stansel. Stansel couldn't make the catch. Second and 10. Pass over the middle. Caught. First down. 27-yard line. That's Brown. That's Samuel Brown. <laughs> Boy, you like Terrence Jones' arm. The poise standing in the pocket. Waiting for a receiver to get open. A long post, a skinny post right there. Great diving catch by Samuel Brown. Here's Jones throwing again, incomplete. Too tall for his intended receiver. Trying to find James Lewis at second down and 10. And if they had to kick the field goal right now, it would be a 42-yarder. Clock is stopped, a minute 37 to go. Morehouse. On the defense, desperately trying to get this game to overtime. Tuskegee looking to win at the end of the fourth quarter and protect their national number eight ranking in Division Two. It's second and ten. Jones to pass again. The throw caught inside the 20-yard line, but not a first down. It'll be third and a yard. Smart pass caught by Kenneth Horton. Smart play by Tuskegee. They're going to take everything away from the outside, so you try to go underneath. You send a good receiver like Horton who will go over the middle. He makes the catch, but you're now in prime field goal range as we get close to a minute left to play. Down to a minute ten right now. You can see the clock, time remaining in the upper left-hand portion of your screen. Third and a yard. It's a quarterback draw. First down. Down to the 10-yard line goes the quarterback, Terrence Jones, the junior from Norman Park, Georgia. And right now, Tuskegee is definitely in field goal range. Clock starting again. 
We're down to 50 seconds to go in the fourth. It's a first down for Tuskegee at the 10. They can get a first down inside the one. Two wide receivers to the right. Jones again from the shotgun. Throwing to the end zone. Pass is caught. And the clock continues to run. It is not a first down. A great battle for that ball. Kimball is going to get the reception. And the defender, Ronald Small, says, hey, I was right there for the catch. Similar play to the one that Smalls made the interception on in the first half. That time, Colin Kimball and Smalls, two of the better players in the SIAC. And those two guys are best battling, battling each other for the football. There's the pass, the outright. And let's just take a look at this. Let's just watch and see what exactly occurs on this play. You see both guys going out for the football. And, and from this vantage point, I tell you, Ty goes to the runner. I think Kimball actually had the football. Kimball had the ball as he goes down. Let's watch this nice pass. There's the floater. Watch the concentration. Watch Kimball come down right there with the catch. It's a great job by the guys in the truck. Great gig camera work. Watch this right there. And you can see he's down with his knee touches. It's a tie. The ball goes to him. Keeps the possession going. And again, Tuskegee in prime position right now to win this football. They're going to try and win it right now. 13.4 seconds to go. That's smart. If they botch the, they botch the snap or anything, it's second down. You'll have the ball again. There is Travis Gums. Two of five on the season with a long of 40. This will be a 19-yard attempt from the right hash. Good snap. Kick is up. Hit the crossbar. And good! Knocked it in through the side pocket. Three ball, side pocket shot. A 19-yard field goal with 13.4 seconds to go. Apparently is going to give Tuskegee a 17-14 win over Morehouse. It doesn't get much closer than that. Watch this. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, we say it every week. You just, you know, you don't want to have a loser. It hits the crossbar and ricochets in. Wow. Wow. Tuskegee has scored 10 consecutive points here in the fourth quarter to recapture the lead, 17-14. Now just seven seconds remain in regulation. Seventeen fourteen. Tuskegee now at the lead. Tuskegee looking for their thirty-first win. The band is now all fired up. They had to stop the band a while ago because they were making so much noise. Squid kick. And this one will be fielded by Rogers. The clock has expired. The ball goes out of the end zone, and the game is over. A safety has been called on that final return attempt by Rogers. So that will make our final score this afternoon, 19 to 14. Well, we had to wait a while for the fireworks to start, but when they did, they provided a terrific show. Tuskegee, a winner over Morehouse, 1914. Coaches meeting at the middle of the field. Rick Comagy, the head coach at Tuskegee. Willard Sism, the head coach at Morehouse College. With the victory, number eight, Tuskegee, the Golden Tigers up their record to six and one, four and one in conference play. Morehouse drops to four and three and two and two in league competition.
We'll head down to the field and hear from some of the participants in just a moment. Tuskegee over Morehouse, 1914. Talk about the last play of the field goal. Ricocheting off the right post. Come on now. Yeah, uh, the offense put together a great drive, and they told me if it came down to be, I, I better make it. I was a little complacent earlier in the year, but I felt that I needed to step up, and that, that was my time to step up. And uh, it was a little too close, but I'm glad it went in. This is very cliche. Everybody says, well, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? I was just thinking I had to make it. I mean, they the offense got us down there, so my job is to kick the ball through, and that's what I did. Two of five field goals coming into the day. You'd made your last two, the longest being from 40 yards. Obviously, you wanted to get closer. Talk about that play. The ball goes off the post. Did you miss hit it? It just it worked that way. Talk about that. Um, well, as the ball was coming back there, I was thinking I just better hit the ball clean. And uh, I took a little hesitation step because I wanted to hit it clean. And uh, that kind of messed me up. It threw off my angle. But luckily, the ball ricocheted off the post and went in. You're our food line most valuable player, you know, some drum line most valuable player. So let me ask you a question now. You got the beat. You got the good foot. Where does this game take you now? This this gives you a lot of confidence. It's got to. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm just looking forward uh, to Fort Valley. We have to beat them next week. So uh, that's uh, our goal as a team is to beat Fort Valley. So that's what we're going to try and do next week. Travis, I want to congratulate you first. Get with your teammates. You know, game winner, the drum line MVP. Take a look at the hero at Tuskegee University, Travis Gums. Travis, congratulations. Dave, back to you. All right, Travis Gums with a 19-yard field goal in the final seconds wins the game for Tuskegee over Morehouse College, the final 19 to 14. We've got more from Columbus in a moment. Stay with us. Tuskegee Morehouse football classic, another memorable game. Tuskegee with a field goal in the final seconds of safety on the final play. They outlast Morehouse, 19-14. Back down game. And it was the 19-yard field goal by Travis Gums with just seconds remaining in the game, and it lifted Tuskegee to a come-from-behind 19-14 win over the Maroon Tigers of Morehouse College. That's going to do it for our coverage this afternoon in Columbus, Georgia. Our final score once again, 19-14. Don't forget, our next game coming up, very interesting battle, Virginia State and Virginia Union. That'll be on November 2nd in Richmond, 1.30 kickoff time. Check our local listings. For Stan Luter, I'm Dave Weekly saying so long from Columbus, Georgia. I'm Mark Gray. I'm Dwayne Bell.